the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. But I want you to be very sensitive in the spirit. Inside, outside, there's so many people scattered all around this auditorium and outside, and many following from different parts of the world. And um, I want us to lend our destinies, our attention. And whilst I speak, when the power of God comes upon anybody, just guide them quietly, just help them so they don't injure themselves and you. Tonight's teaching is one of the eight mysteries that the Spirit of the Lord gave me. I may not have time to share with you my spiritual journey and my walk with the Lord. A number of you have read and heard about my encounters with the Lord. And every true apostolic ministry is based on the mysteries committed by God to a generation not just to an individual, not just to a church. And one of the mysteries that God committed, remember we taught that the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets by which we walk practically in dominion. The teaching, if understood tonight, will totally not just heal and deliver, but will bring serious transformation not only to this territory, not only to this state, but even across the neighboring regions. And I pray that within the few minutes we have to share the truths that the Spirit of God will breathe upon this message. In the name of Jesus. Tonight I'm teaching on the mystery of the body of Christ. The bride of Christ. Tonight's teaching will bring spiritual stability to every believer and will grant us access to be able to experience the fullness of the life that is resident in the Christ. Eternal life there is not very accurate because everybody has eternal life. When you die here, you don't stop living. You only translate to another dimension, but living continues. Are we together? The rich man and Lazarus, remember? And they were separated, but both alive and could communicate. So it says that God has given us Zoe now, eternal life, and that the life is in his son, and whosoever has the son hath that life. The second encounter is the encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. It is true that the Holy Spirit engenders the new birth experience. Please listen. But it, he has a separate office. Are we together now? John chapter 16, Jesus was teaching the, the disciples and he says, When he, the spirit of truth, is come. 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 I command you to let that lady go now. I declare, let her go now. Let her go now. Don't mind me. Let me just do my mad thing. Let her go now. I speak to this spirit that I see. Release that dear sister now and release her family in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That person is here and when the power of God comes upon that person, is is a serious emancipation God is bringing to his sister and her family now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord just interrupted me. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that person be free now. Yeah. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's continue. The third encounter is the encounter with the Word of God. The thoughts, the logos of God. And then the last encounter is what I want to teach now. Encounter with the body of Christ. Many believers have not known that the body of Christ as an entity needs to be encountered there. There are dimensions. Am I doing anything wrong? Okay. There are dimensions of spiritual possibility and there is a huge price to pay if you do not understand the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please. We are Bible students, so let's get to the word. We'll read from verse 27. We'll read in context. Apostle Paul is teaching the church in Corinth, and he's, he was teaching them on what we call the Holy Communion. Are we together now? And he begins to borrow a, an expression that we'll be using tonight. He's teaching them, this was at a point where the people were handling the communion carelessly, Pastor. And some of them would take from the wine and get drunk. There was a lot of lawlessness. So Paul was bringing order to the church. Are we together? Verse 27. So he's speaking about the body of Christ and the cup. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Next verse, please. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning. Please keep verse 29, just keep it up there. Not discerning. So what is the sin here? not discerning so he's not just talking about communion like wafas and zobo no those are just emblems they are representations of a higher reality that the, the christ has a body and that the body must be discerned are we together now so that there is a crime a believer can commit and it will short circuit his experiencing the fullness of christ and this is what he calls it not discerning the lord's body what is the consequence? Verse 30. Read with me if you are a Christian. For this cause. Stop. What cause? The cause of not discerning the body. What has happened to many? Number one. Many are weak. Number two. Many are sickly among you. Number three. Many sleep. The word sleep there is die. When was the last time you saw an obituary? And they told you the reason why this man died was because he did not discern the Lord's body. It's a very powerful teaching that you can encounter Christ and yet not encounter his body. And this is the resultant effect. Your life will be short-circuited that the body of Christ as an entity must also be encountered. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Very powerful. Just follow me. And while you are following me, pray for grace. So that I'll be able to just touch on this. Let me start by teaching something. Please prepare two or three of you. I will make use of you shortly. There is a bias that happens to a believer on account of the dealings of God with such a believer. Now I'm ready to have two or three people. Any gentlemen, please. Just two or three of you. Just come stand, space yourself. God bless you. Thank you. Ah, you're allowing our uncle to come. Please, sir, you, you may go back, please. You really want to come? I'm not sure. Thank you for your humility. God bless you. Please just stand, everyone. Watch this. Now, when you begin your spiritual journey, please, everyone, pay attention. When you begin your spiritual journey, Everybody starts from the same pace. Born again, prayer, church, etc., etc. Are we together? But whilst you progress in your dealings with God, based on the predeterminate counsel of God and your call, your office, and your dimension, the Spirit of God begins to diverge everybody to different realms of operation. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? And there is a side effect to that act. That's what I want to start teaching. That means that if this man has been destined by God to, to work in a prophetic ministry, for instance, notice that the nature and the character of the dealings of the spirit with this man may not be the same as this man. They all start from the same group or the same fellowship. Yet you will begin to notice an unusual grace for prayer and fasting. Above the average, you may not know why. And the colleagues may think he's just being overzealous. But it is, it is the separations of the spirit so that you will begin to have the personalized dealings of the spirit. Please listen. Now, because of the character of that dealing, when he has been isolated for a season, the curriculum of his dealing with the spirit will not capture many things that his life needs. For instance, the spirit of God will not teach this man at that point of, of tutelage on excellence, on finances. He may buy a book on finances and the spirit of God will say, drop it, read a book on prayer. Watch this. This guy is being trained to be a prophet to the nations, but there is a side effect. Because he needs to have grace for finances, he needs leadership, he needs administration. Yet God will on purpose for that time negate him from studying those things. He will keep him at the core of what will represent the epicenter of his ministry. Now when this guy is done with God in that training, the lapse and the lopsidedness in his not having other dimensions will create a faulty ministry if he goes that way. Because the only part he would teach is the part that was captured in his dealings. So chances are that this man will have a church and in his church he would trivialize excellence. He would trivialize administration. The only thing that will happen in his church is an extension of what happened in his secret place. Listen, please. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Now, this guy, his destiny is to be a kingdom leader and an administration. Uh, an, an administrator. Are we together? The character of his dealings, his personalized dealings with God, may not capture too much of prayer and fasting and warfare and all of this. This guy will be encouraged to go to John C. Maxwell's Leadership Institute. Are we together now? And he, he will be very logical and academic in his approach. Follow me now. At the end of it, this man will be able to raise CEOs in his church. They will be exceptionally brilliant people, intellectuals, but the deficiency of this dimension of dealing will reflect in that church. You will find out that people are doing well, getting jobs, becoming captains of industry, but dying of sickness, prayerlessness, carnal, backsliders. The dealing of God was supposed to leave you needing the body. Hold on. We are building something. So this guy, the nature of his dealing can make him believe all that God taught him is all there is to be learned. Are you seeing that now? And so everybody he mentors or teaches will come from a standpoint of that limitation. Not encountering the body will cause this man to destroy so many people. Because many people will be poor and broke. Families will break up. Divorce rates will be high under his leadership and this one here is going to be obituary upon obituary darkness will move in and out of the church on him that they will participate in the service the only evidence of god in that church will be prosperity now watch this and these are their uncle here now god takes him to a dimension where the grace of a teacher is what his destiny is going to be holding and manifesting. Because of that, he will encounter the spirit of revelation in an unusual way. This man can lock himself for one week, not praying, no, just studying. Any book at all, he will have a library that is taller than him. Now, listen, he may not even know what is sponsoring that passion. 
Now, if this man stands from where he is and mentors his children in the gospel, do you know what is going to happen? If he's not careful, he will teach them to trivialize prayer because that was not an emphasis in his training. And he will teach them to, to de-emphasize administration. Everybody say the body of Christ. Revelations 21. Mm. I will show you what the bride of Christ looks like. Because Christ has a bride. The name of his bride is his body, the church. Revelations chapter 21. We'll read from verse 9. Are we there? And there came unto me, please look up, one of the seven angels which had seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, let's read together now, come hither, and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So we're about to see the wife of the lamb now. Ready? Next verse. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city. So the bride is a city. The bride is a city. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Uh huh. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious. Look at the description of that bride. Even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Read on, please. And had a wall, this and that and that, having the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's go to 13. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. Uh-huh. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. 16. Now read with me if you are a Christian. Ready? This is still the Lamb's wife. He says, and the city lieth. The word four square means balance. The bride is balanced. And he says, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. Listen, and the length and the breadth and the height of it are no exaggeration, no imbalance. That's the lamb's wife. That the dimensions of the lamb's wife, every dimension was measured perfectly. Listen, listen. Truth can kill. It's not only a lie that kills. When truth is exaggerated beyond the boundaries of its usefulness, it can still kill. Satan does not only use a lie to kill, he can use truth to kill. Imbalance is more dangerous than error. Because it will cause you to, to exaggerate a thing and a truth beyond the proportions of its relevance as apportioned by God. There is nothing wrong with prosperity and teaching about prosperity. But when it is exaggerated beyond the boundaries of its usefulness, it will now destroy the hearers. There is nothing wrong about the knowledge of the operation of demons and deliverance. But when it is exaggerated beyond its boundary, it will lead men to bondage again and again. There is nothing wrong with the teaching ministry. But when it is exaggerated, men will pride themselves in education more than encounter. There is nothing wrong in the ministry of prayer. All of these things have their jurisdiction in the building of that city. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Encounter with the body of Christ. So Apostle Paul teaches us that there is an error in the body. And that that error in the body, if not corrected, will destroy the potential of many believers. Now I'm using only these three people. Uh, but it can be more. So let's call this three the body of Christ. Everybody say the body of Christ. Notice, notice that the body of Christ is not an individual. It's not a ministry. It is when they come together that they form the body of Christ. That means that the best a man can be is an effective part 
an effective member that no man has what it takes to represent the entire scope of all that Christ is. No matter how anointed any man or any church is, it is not given to an individual man or ministry to single-handedly present the entire picture of the Christ. It is not in God's economy. No single person can do that. When Jesus took the bread, Pastor, he broke it into different dimensions. Remember, the bread is him. And he broke himself into different dimensions and shared it among the apostles. Twelve representing his government. No individual can carry all the bread alone. It is when they come together that they will form the complete bread. So everybody takes a piece of that bread. But the problem is when your dimension now becomes a proposition that that is all that God is. It becomes dangerous. That means, watch me this. That means there are people today who should not die if they understood certain ministries. But because they were taught and mentored that those dimensions are not necessary for this cause, many are sick. There are many poor people today who love God and they are well-meaning and there are graces in the body that should solve their financial problems but they have been mentored to trivialize that dimension that it is less spiritual than prayer and fasting so they are fasting giants and great apostles and prophets but they begin to manipulate people because the reality of economic hardship must be solved For this cause, a popular saying is Hakane Allah Shiria. Look at what the Lord just did to these people now. You know, I told you something that when your pain becomes indefinite, you will stand a chance of creating a theology around that pain to explain that God can no longer move in that dimension. This is what has happened to the body of Christ. Everybody who wants to prosper, we usually try it quietly and fail many times quietly. And out of that pain, like putting your hand in fire, just bring it out quietly and say, God does not prosper. Anything that all is prosperity, no, 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 no. We don't throw the baby and the bath water together. Please understand this. Revelations chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. You are opening our eyes. This is the revelation that changed my life and transformed me. Revelation chapter 1 from verse 9. We're reading down to 13. Please, everyone, look up. I, John, this is Apostle John now, in the Isle of Patmos, who was your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the Isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Read on, please. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me, so John was caught up to the realm of the spirit, I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, uh-huh, saying, I am Alpha, Omega, the first, last, what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches and he lists all of them. Next verse, 12. I turn to see, now watch this, please come together, sirs. Can we just come together? Let me dramatize what you are reading now. John is hearing a voice speak to him. Are we together? John turns to see that voice and then when John turned, he didn't see a man he saw seven lampstands. Are we together now? And then when he, and you know that that lampstand there stands for the complete church. So when God spoke and John turned, he didn't see God, but he saw the church. When he kept looking at the church in the midst of the lampstands, verse 13, in the midst of the seven lampstands, what did he see? One like unto the Son of Man, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, no matter how bad the church is, Christ is still in the midst of the lampstands. There may be imperfections, I agree. 
There may be exaggerations, I agree. There may be childishness and carnality, I agree. There may be manifestations of flesh and limitation, I agree. But were you not taught that husbands love their wives? A, a, a man was designed to love his wife unto death. If your wife gets injured, do you run away? Please talk to me. It's a covenant for life. In the midst of the church, Christ is there. Are we together now? In the midst of the exaggeration, the man is a true man of God. He just likes money. May God help him. But just because he likes money may not necessarily mean he's evil and wrong. If you throw the baby and the bad water, you will miss out on that grace. Please listen. Elijah was a temperous man, yet he was a prophet. If you walk with Elijah, you will hate him. You know, many times we love these people because we are not in their generation. Would you like a man that enters a, a church to flog people? That's your Jesus, the one you shout all the time and say, I love you. If you were in your church, you would never invite him for any conference. Now, please follow me. The greatest of every man is a man. There is this treasure the Bible says. And it tells you the vessel is earthen. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not justifying carelessness and some of this foolishness all around. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just helping you know that an encounter with the body of Christ will perfect your walk in the spirit. There are many people today who love God with all their heart. And while they are praying, their pastors may have told them, if you see any material from maybe Papa Kumui, don't go and meet all those deeper like people. And the grace for holiness, genuine holiness is what he needs. But there is a provision for that grace in the body. But because of the bias that has come from a ministry that may not see the necessity for that dimension, that young man will die in sin and immorality and not be able to bail himself out. Whereas subscribing to that grace can take that thing once and for all. Listen, listen to me. The fact that a dimension is not present in your life does not mean it's in the body. It may not be in your church, but it's in the body. Listen, so every time you pray and ask God to help you, he will refer you to you will be surprised when he says all things are possible. It is because he has vested his foot in the body. Not all in your church, but in the body. Lord, why is my life delayed? And God says the answer is in the body. But then you have taught yourself that it is only my curriculum that represents all of God. Listen. Even encounter with Jesus is no substitute for the need for the body. Remember Saul. Saul encountered Jesus on his way to Damascus. Are we Bible students? When Jesus had an encounter with him, he still referred him back to the body to continue the training. He said, go to the house of Judah. Stay there. I will send a man to continue. Why do you need a man when you have met Jesus? For this cause, Many pastors who would have been powerful men of God for this cause. Many are weak. Many children today who would have gotten jobs years ago with one prophetic word. Everything, every tragedy would have gone away. So we have Pentecostals here insulting Orthodox pastors and looking at them and saying, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't understand anything, you are just teaching boring theology. But do you know, I grew up from that kind of background and I'm grateful because it's one of the systems that has created balance in my life today. Many young people who just encounter the Holy Ghost have anointing but no character. Listen, listen. They may not have helped in the dimension of the spirit and all of this, but it is in the Orthodox Church of land that someone can die and in one hour people are coming to rally around and greet. Many Pentecostals, when someone dies, they know we don't believe in death. Find your way and go. Go and bury them in your village church somewhere. The grace for love and hospitality may not be in your church, but it's in the body. 
The pastor may not be able to teach all the revelations you know, but he has character. He can teach love. He can teach fatherhood. Listen very carefully to what I'm telling you. Our refusal, there are people in Joss here who anybody who is not praying in tongues and not working miracles and signs and wonders and prophesying, it is believed that they are not serious Christians, they are wasting their time and we continue to insult the fathers of faith in the land and insult everybody and especially some of us young people who are just starting with little grace here and there, one Greek and Hebrew word. Now please, I love you, I'm teaching the body, listen very carefully. Sit down, sit down, sit down. No, this is not tell them. Sit down and let the Spirit of God talk to everyone. Pastor provided the platform for the body to listen. Let me tell you, the proof that it is God that is building you is humility and love will grow too. The moment you are growing in revelation and it comes with pride, you are altering the training. Are we together? I have the privilege of meeting so many people. And sometimes I meet, my parents are here. You can see my parents, my auntie, they're all here listening to me. Now, just because I'm anointed, just because I'm a man of God, are we together? Should not get to me to dishonor my people and turn to be a fool. If I see my mother carrying something today, I will collect it and hold it on my head. There are people who are not preachers, but a woman has 10 children and all of them are responsible. Don't you know it's a grace? You are struggling with one child who is giving you high blood pressure. And there is a woman who, she, she was roasting corn. And with that corn, she trained 10 children. There is a grace. That man of God, if you can humble and receive that grace, that one child will be fixed at once. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep. If Jesus didn't resurrect Lazarus, you would have concluded the fact that he resurrected Lazarus meant it was not the time for him to go. Now, I don't mean to get you emotional, but do you know how many people today who have gone who should not go? Do you know how many people whose situations could be solved in moments? Do you know how many people in financial squalor today who could have tapped into the supply provided in the body? Do you know how many prayerless lives would have tapped into the grace that is able to solve them? I came tonight to teach you a dimension, church in Joss. Nobody thrives being an individual. The system of the body is the system that prevails over darkness. Listen, unity is not uniformity. If you are doing the same thing, everybody is a sign of imbalance. Unity is that you are coordinated by the same objective. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. So the Pentecostals are insulting the Orthodox. The Orthodox are there with their own revenge mission. Everybody is finding a platform to lash out on one another. And God is watching with shock and surprise. And saying, what is going on? Both of them are wrong. This is what is terrible. Both of them are wrong. And you know, no matter how you look at it, somebody from any dimension has a result. So because of the presence of an obvious result, you may think that their advocacy to detach themselves from the body is a healthy thing. Pick a coal from a collection of coal in fire. Just pick it with a tongue and drop it and leave it. Don't off it. Just leave it there. What begins to happen? It goes down. The strength of the church is in her unity. This is why God gave unto some apostles, listen carefully, and prophets and pastors, evangelists, for the equipping of the saints. Until we all together come into the unity of faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? In a few minutes, I'm going to be praying for the sick. And now you will see people who came sick and the power of God will touch them just because they came. But someone, for instance, just an example, might say, oh, House on the Rock is not my church. 
but that's where God has put an anointing to set you free. If you have the open-heartedness, I will tell you, I will answer your question in your heart. Because for many people, our claim of running away from the body is that we do not want to be corrupted. That is the fear. I, I don't want a false prophet or a false apostle or a false teacher. I don't want a boring orthodox teacher who is just teaching me jargons and stories. And everybody has their justifications. Let me tell you this. I don't have the time, but uh, the, I wish I had the time. We need to pray. But in Judges chapter 14, please give it to us. The, the fear of associating with the body is hidden in a riddle that Samson gave. Judges chapter 14. We'll start from verse 12. Samson gave a riddle and that riddle contains a secret that explains the reason why most of us are not comfortable to tap from the vast supplies deposited in the body. Let's see the riddle. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If thou can certainly declare it me within seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 change of garment. 13. But if you cannot, then this and that and that. Let's look at the riddle, verse 14. And he said, Please follow me, Joss. Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. Explain. This is Samson asking the city of Joss. There is a riddle here that we want to work on now. Do you know what led to this riddle? Remember that Samson killed a lion. Is that true? He killed a lion and left it down. And then he came back after seven days and noticed something strange. That bees left the trees around and made honey in the carcass of the lion. Bees should not make honey in a carcass. There are trees. A carcass is smelly. So Samson reached out and got the honey through the carcass. And this is the riddle. That means if you can endure the smell, there is still honey in the carcass. It is true that it is a carcass. It is true that the man of God may have temper, but God refused to remove the anointing on him. He's still there. It's true that Elijah is an angry man. It's true that Moses can be angry, but he's still God's anointed. The key is to have the fortitude and the balance. You know, you've seen me preach in almost every church you can think about. I mean, I've mentioned almost any church pastor and God has granted me access. You know why? Because of this one revelation. There are churches, I have my personal convictions as a person. And the people I mentor and train, I guide them along the convictions that God has given me. But I have sustained the flexibility to be tolerant and open with the body. That becomes the key to reception. You can't go to every church and want your church to be there. No, you will see things here and there. I've gone to churches where they are extremely conservative. You don't even play a keyboard while the sound is on. Keep quiet. There are churches you don't even move around. Are we together now? You stand in one place and finish it there. And you must sustain the flexibility. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is a message for men of God and a message for the city. Can you endure the smell? Of the carcass because you are hungry and in need of honey unfortunately the honey is in the carcass your pastor may insult you every time as a worker and you are saying you're a man of God and yet you are insulting me you will go to hell and you want to leave and God says stay there and then one day he looks at you and the Spirit of God is upon him and he speaks over your life you have gotten the reward of that grace. How do you think Elijah endured Elijah? The Bible called him the man that poured water. I, I know why the sons of the prophet were angry. That guy must have been harassing them and insulting them. They say, he's going to hell. Let him go to heaven. Let's rest. This wicked lecturer. He would turn and insult Elisha. Elisha said, no problem. I know what I'm looking for. You are an angry man, but you are an anointed angry man. May God help your anger, but I will pursue the anointing. Listen, listen. There is nothing of value that is cheap. I 
Are we together? So there are times that you will go online and God will show you and take you to a message. And the moment you see the name of the preacher, you remember what your pastor told you. That anybody who is not healed is not God. You remember what your I'm not insulting any man of God. Please, please, I'm speaking to the body. It's a correction. It's an adjustment. If I tell my people today that I'm the only one that is the ultimate custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom and that no other person in the body is worth listening to, and I even teach, for instance, that no matter what it is, there is nothing out there that is different from what I have. I'm an arrogant liar. I must have the humility to admit that as effective as I am, the body, my limitations that came with my training, when God was building me, he didn't teach me on wealth. He didn't teach me on administration. That is not captured in an apostolic ministry. You will have to tap into the supply of the graces in the body that were designed to remedy that. When you see a man as though he's complete and flawless, he's standing on the strength of his alignment to the body. That's what makes him, although an individual, he functions from a standpoint of quintessence, perfection. So you look at him and he's sound in administration. He's sound in leadership. He's sound in teaching. He's sound in the gifts of the spirit. And you are wondering, it looks like God gave him everything. No. God gave him his training, his humility and alignment supplied for the labs. In 2004, I came into this city from Zaria. Because Reinhard Bonke was having a crusade. Listen carefully. I had seen that grace upon his life. And I desired that dimension. Remember, I'm a man of God too. You were about to pray. You will soon learn that you don't receive from a colleague. In the realm of the spirit, there must be a spiritual potential difference. If you are not willing to submit to that understanding and that, you cannot receive from a colleague. We are all pastors. We are all prophets. We are all this. There is ranking in the spirit. This is, listen, listen. This is not an insult. We are equal in Christ. We are not equal in the distribution of graces. Our sacrifices alongside the predeterminate counsel of God has separated us into spiritual leaders. Even among the stars, he says, one different from another in glory. I'll be stupid today to see Betty Hinn and say, you are healing, I'm healing. You are teaching, I'm teaching. How are you? We are colleagues. It's a mistake. It's a big mistake. Elijah said, if you can see me, was he not looking at him? If you discern what I represent, that I'm not just a young man you have been following after. So you look at your pastor, Reverend Akila. Some of you knew him before he started. Some of you knew his wife before she started. And to a number of us, he is just that great friend who is now in ministry. Is the reason why strangers keep receiving and going. That's why many members don't receive from their pastors. It looks like the miracles are stage managed because that familiarity, the refusal. Please, I'm not teaching human worship. I know there are men of God who have exaggerated and oppressed people out of insecurity. I'm teaching you a balanced understanding that there is ranking in the spirit. The pride of our generation has destroyed us a lot. Hallelujah. Jesus entered a certain city and he could not do miracles. They knew him when he was cutting wood. Ah, the carpenter's son. So you have become the evangelist that everybody knows. And Jesus looked at them. I have a lot of love and respect for people. But if you dishonor me and the grace of God upon my life, I will not fight you. But I will never have anything to do around you. Because you will not receive. It's a waste of time. 
is the reason why people come to God when the case is over. Because their pride will not let them tap into the body first. It's only when the doctors look at you and say, my, my brother, uh, I'm a Christian, but the way this thing is now, I don't think you'll be up to one month. They'll say, there's no man of God there. I don't even know whether he, he claim he can heal and you drag yourself as if you are coming to somebody you paid money for. Yeah, I heard that you heal. Is it true? Listen, notice that Bartimaeus never called Jesus, Jesus. He said, thou son of David. Didn't he know his name? Are, are you like, is, is this making sense to you? The first night, as a man of God, I came down to Joss. There was a field and people were standing. Ray had a minister. By the second day, I said, I must serve this man of God. I can't come and stand like this. I came to receive something. Everybody said the body of Christ. I had seen results, but there were dimensions I needed desperately in my life. So I saw them pushing people on wheelchairs. And then I said, can I help? They said, no, you must be trained. I said, training or no training? I must walk. I must be part of this. I didn't go there as a man of God. I went there as a hungry person ready to receive from the body. As I was wheeling the chairs, I said, this is how it will be in my meetings. Oh God, I am honoring the grace that already carries that possibility. One day, this is how people will come and walk out free in my meetings. I stood there for six hours. Behind every glory, there is a story. Every great man has a history. It's just that greatness can erode the scars, but it doesn't mean they are not there. Reinhard Bonke preached, permit me to use the word, a very boring message. And if you carry the spirit of revelation, it takes grace to listen to certain sermons. Because I mean, I'm there and, and scriptures are just rolling around my head and this man is just cracking a joke and people are laughing. And does this man know how, I mean, my eyes was fixed. I said, even if his story, story is talking, I want to listen. Listen to this. When he finished preaching, he was about to minister the baptism and then he just took a cup of water and the Lord opened my eyes and for the first time I saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit I saw a giant bird moving around the entire arena I didn't even know I was in a vision my hunger and my honor had touched him by the time I came back from that encounter I was back in the stage Back in the stage, I knew something came upon my life. I said, that's it. I've got to it. I'm sharing with you a few stories to encourage you. The Lord spoke to me a few years ago that he wanted to bring me to a level of grace. And God had helped me. And God gave me an instruction. I got up one morning and I went down to Canaan land. Got the available flight and I went down to Canaan land to go and meet God's servant Bishop and the rest is history. I went there, packaged the seed, went to just bless and honor him. And immediately I did. I came out. I was going to enter the car to see if I could make it back or at least rest in Lagos before I return. And then the Holy Spirit asked me to come out. And he said I should kneel on the ground. Right there on the ground. I placed all of my hands. And he said from today you have entered the overflow anointing. This man you see standing before you is a product of many graces. Graces are like addresses. You can know where they came from. Towards the end of last year, I went to minister at a Foursquare conference. Amazing ministry. I always go to minister at their conference. And they kept me in MFM prayer ground. I said, thank you, Jesus. That was where they lodged me. So I waited for all the protocol because they won't allow me to go and pray. You know, man of God protocol. I said, finish and go and leave me. As soon as they finished, I woke up in the night and I entered the ground, the prayer ground. I said, Lord, the grace that can give a man territory like this, there has to be a grace. I can go there as Apostle Joshua Selman, who the nations are clapping for, and live in my arrogance and pride. But I went there, I said, Lord, there has to be a way. I lay down there and cried my life and prayed my heart 
I said something must come upon me. There is almost no major campground in this nation that I've not been to. There is nobody that is perfect, but in the midst of the lampstands. Please listen to me very carefully. I saw a level of excellence in House on the Rock that I greatly desire. Because my background did not train me to be that flawless and excellent. I saw that grace. And I knew that when you are not excellent, you look suspicious. It's, it's a revelation that I got. I, I already know the extreme levels of the demonstration of the Spirit in my life. And I know that if I look like a herbalist, I will pay for it. So I needed to tap into a grace, not a counsel. I've ministered in many House on the Rock churches and I've discerned the grace for excellence that they carry. And I opened my heart to receive that grace and he's speaking. Which grace have you ignored? Men of God, we come on stage and we vent our insecurities. The fear of losing members will cause us to create theologies that stop people from accessing the diverse supplies resident within the body. We turn our insecurities into messages and we continue to teach them. God is speaking to us. We are killing people. God is speaking to us. We are leaving people poor. Now, that does not mean as a shepherd, you do not have, you have a spiritual responsibility over your people. No true shepherd will allow the people to be careless. You will define the boundaries of their feeding and help them to grow well. But at the same time, it must be a conscious revelation in anyone that the greatest of us is only an effective part. I didn't come to this city to intimidate the men of God and to say, oh, a great apostle has landed in town. All you pastors who are not serious, I will be stupid to do that. There are men and women who continue to labor for the kingdom in this city. Your pastor being a chief among them. I have come to support the hands of the church. To say together like an unbeatable army, we can introduce light to this city and quench darkness. I was in Yola for a conference and then the uh, press people were ready to interview me. They were so happy because they had listened to my message. And they came in, you know, and they were saying all kinds of things. And one of them was insinuating, you know, he was giving a statement like, ah, you just came into Yola. All this nonsense they have been teaching in Yola. Thank God you have arrived. You will teach us what, you know, that kind of thing. And I stopped him immediately. I said, no, this is not why I came. I did not come to intimidate any man of God and destroy any man's work. I did not come to prove superiority because all I am and all I have is a product of God's grace. I have come by the privilege and the mercy of God to be a support to the church. No man of God will fight you when you maintain this disposition. Is God speaking to us? For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. As I minister to people every day, many times I ask myself, what would have been if these people did not meet me? Do you know that when Saul, pastor, lost his donkey, we're about to pray. Saul, the son of Kish, lost his donkey. They looked for it for three days. Everybody say delay. Say it again, delay. They looked for it and for three days they never found it. They would have gone back and said, How can they lie, Sharia? No, when donkeys are missing, they cannot be found. But the servant of Saul said, mm -mm, mm -mm. Just because we can't find it does not mean it cannot be found. He said, There is a man of God. Let's switch to another supply still in the body. A holy man of God. Look at what was a problem for them. Three days of searching for the sheep. The donkey. As soon as they met Samuel, my God. Do you know challenges are relative? Relative to the grace that is at work in your life. There are graces you meet, they will trivialize 10 years challenges to look like child's play. Not every mountain is everybody's mountain. Don't generalize it. As hard as finance is, there are people that have been, they are gatekeepers of that realm. 
An encounter with them will keep your life's poverty forever in your life. But until then, it will remain a mountain that will depress you to death. As soon as they met with Samuel, I can imagine them saying, ah, man of God, Samuel said, no, go up. Leave the issue of donkey. That's a little issue. Go up. Let me tell you what is in your heart. This is a man, not an angel. As soon as Saul saw Samuel, the donkey started going back home. Look at that. No prayer. As soon as a man meets another man, restoration begins. Oh, we are here to see only Jesus. We are not here to see any man. I know you are right, but you are wrong. Because God minus men will not produce anything. Until there was a man, Israel suffered for 430 years. Not because God was not God, until he found a man. What is there in the men of God? Why do we celebrate them? Is he not an ordinary man? Why didn't God show up in your home? Why did God wait until certain personalities showed up? Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm creating a healthy culture of, of honor and understanding. For pastors that misbehave and take advantage of the loyalty of people, we pray that God will help them in Jesus' name. But then it does not mean like you see someone honoring your pastor and his wife today and you say, what is there? Is it not this man? I am men, God. Please, let's be careful. Men are men except for what is on them. Please listen to me. We're about to pray. The prayer will be a quick walk. This is really the miracle service. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your prophetic plus pastor's excellence. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your prayer plus his revelatory grace. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your teaching grace plus his grace for character and moral excellence. Imagine that your openness now begins to cover up those deficiencies. Then you will produce the Lamb's wife, the bride, equal in length. Equal in depth, equal in height. This is why your dear pastor, by the privilege of God's grace, brought me here. Because he discerned a supply of that grace that is able to do something to a person and a city. Let me tell you this. Sometimes I wish I'm not the one carrying the anointing I have so that it will make you see that it's not about me. It's a difficult thing when you carry certain graces because you are easily misunderstood. The way people honor you sometimes can be annoying what is there about you. I'm a product of many graces. I was going to go to the U.S. from years ago to meet the great evangelist Charles and Francis Hunter. These were great evangelists. The last of the dispensation of the generals still alive. I wanted to go and meet them. Do you know what I wanted to do? To scrub their toilets for two weeks. I wanted to just go and work for them and serve them. My ticket, my hotel, my visa, as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I was going to walk, not to preach to them in a conference. When they died, I cried. I said, God, why didn't you give me a chance? My greatly referred mentor, Dr. Miles Munro. I was to meet with him a few months. I was in worry for a conference. And that morning, I felt a physical pain on my chest. I knew something had happened. By 5 a.m. that morning, they told me that man had gone to be with the Lord. I cried like a baby in that room. And I said, oh God, you would have given me the opportunity to tell this man 
how great he influenced my life. When I started out in ministry, I wrote a letter to many Jews and many men of God. I'm not even sure I'd reached. You know how we are, men of God. Everybody aware and don't have time. Miles Monroe got my letter and replied me handwritten. Handwritten. The largest ministry in the Bahamas, an advisor to 17 presidents, a custodian of 46 bestseller books, wrote handwritten and encouraged me and told me that he believed in me and that God would use me. It pained my heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle Pastor, do you know what happened today? You know, after the service in the morning, Pastor took me to one of his sons, a, a real estate uh, person, doing an amazing work. So we went on sightseeing just to look at the place and then so that I speak over it. Do you know there was one man there? He used to be my pastor in Plateau Church. I didn't know. He sent me a text while I was preparing to come. His name is Reverend Ben Nassara. A number of you know him. I didn't know he was part of the, uh, the people there. So after I had prayed, and I, 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 I'm not sure I could see, I, I, I don't know. He just sent me a text and said, Apostle, sir, I saw you. You may not remember me, but I'm Rev. Ben, ben Nasser. I told him I'm still a young man. I remember you clearly. God bless you, sir. If I had found you there, I would have come to greet you. That I'm a man of God, what does that change? If he doesn't discern the grace, I give him the blessing of a, a young man. Oh no, and he will carry his robe and go. If he discerns the grace more than that, then he receives the addition. Listen, if you receive a prophet as your brother, you will receive a hawk. If you receive a prophet as your colleague, you will receive gist of memories. That's a friend's reward. I was so blessed and honored. I said, Oh dear, God bless you, sir. One of my teachers, when I was in secondary school, he came for a meeting sometime last year. He was a copper then. And he came and taught us physics. And he had heard about me and he came to the ministry to receive. So while I was ministering, I spotted him. I was welcoming the first one. I said, ah, how are you, sir? And he was so flattered. I called him out and honored him. I said, my God, I remember you. You know, he was a, a bit embarrassed. And I said, it doesn't matter. You can change the future, but you can't change history. Let me tell you this. I'm about to pray. And if your heart is open in this meeting tonight, within the few minutes that we have, God can shift you into levels and dimensions. It doesn't take time. It takes grace. There are pastors here who are doing amazing things for God. But my dear brothers in the ministry, can we open our heart? Take your mind away from the man. Look at the grace. That you can open up your heart to know that there is more. There is more. There is more. There is more. You may be outside sitting, but I want your heart to be open. We are going to do just three things here. We are going to pray for the sick right now. And then I'm going to speak over our lives. And then we'll do the final impartation. And that will be it. Whatever price you will pay tonight is this. I'm not somebody who came from the U.S. or U.K. I'm one among you. I'm a son of the soil. And I know God did it by me. Because there are many of us who would never receive from any, but we have our biases. But God has made it easy for us. Are we ready to pray now? Please rise upon your feet. Thank you, sirs. God bless you, sir. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you And we will never settle for life. We know there's more that's found in you And we will never settle 
something prophetic here please um, I would like six pastors that represent different denominations please come up here make sure that you are recognized by the pastor please let's just do that to honor him quickly please any come stand with me here pastor please may you come I'd like us to hold hands together as a prophetic sign of speaking the unity of the church over this city that we may be different in our understanding. I agree. We may be different in the level and the depth of revelations that we have. I agree. Our character levels may differ. I agree. Our levels of anointing may differ. I agree. I may be Catholic, Evwa, Koking, Anglican, Presbyterian, Pentecostal. It doesn't matter. That the most important thing is the ability to look beyond our differences and see. This is the first assignment tonight that we have to speak prophetically over the city of Joss. Listen very carefully. Part of the apostolic ministry is to create spiritual order with intelligence. Are we together? Let me tell you this. Equa will never be cooking. Never. Cooking will never be angry. Anglican will never be Catholic. Catholic will never be House on the Rock. House on the Rock will never be Presbyterian. Presbyterian will never be Baptist. It will not happen. The advocacy that one day the church will become one central denomination is witchcraft. It's a joke. It will never happen. Yet, he is still here. He, while you laugh at the Catholics, he is still there. While you laugh at the Anglican, he's still there. While you mock at Cokin, he's still there. While you laugh at Equa, he's still there. While you laugh at the Baptist, he's still there. While you laugh at the Pentecostals, he's still there. Let me tell you, when you fight the wife of any responsible man, you will hear from him. This man you are fighting is someone's wife. The name of that someone is Christ. The church you are fighting is someone's wife. And let me tell you, the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. You will not touch pastor's wife and have him just smile at you. God has used this man of God apostolically to speak to the church on the plateau that it is time. Let me tell you this. I want to advise every elderly person here and I'm speaking prophetically to all the pastors. Remember one day we are going to die. Do not leave a curse in the city while you go. A curse of hatred. A curse of backbiting. Because every church you see here has come to stay. The land is not anybody's personal property. The earth is the Lord's.
everyone pray for the church. From Reverend Akila, representing the house of the rock, right to this place. Mention the name of every church you know in this city and say, Lord, your body will stand in just. Are you praying? I may not speak in tongues like the Pentecostal, but that disparity is not enough reason to fight. It's not enough reason to curse. It's not enough reason to create seditions. I may not be a Baptist, but that's not enough reason to insult the dear servants of God, laboring for the kingdom. I may not be talking, but it's not enough reason to insult the dear fathers and mothers that labor in the spirit. Come on, Josh, are you praying? Lord, we decree and declare that we will never allow anyone to divide us again. We will never allow anyone to divide us again. We will never allow anyone to divide us again. The voice of prejudice, the voice of hatred, the voice of wickedness. Regardless of differences, regardless of levels of revelation, regardless of levels of encounter, there are things to change in every church, I agree. There are character issues to solve, I agree. There are spiritual issues to solve, I agree. There are leadership issues to solve, I agree. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is the key. Hold on, sir. This is the key to driving away the plague of terrorism and death. The government can only do their best. But for as long as there is an edge broken, the serpent will keep striking. And let me tell you, don't think because your church has not yet been born, it will not happen. Don't be like Esther who was in the palace and was watching her man plot against God's people. Mordecai told her and said, if you don't do it, you will see it shift in our economy. Are we together now? Please agree with Pastor wholeheartedly while he prays. Take, take away any biases or any prejudice you have about any man of God or any sect. Leave judgment to God. Yours is to open up your heart sincerely and pray that the church be one. Pastor Sam. In Jesus' name. Here we are, Lord, in your presence. We have heard your word. We have received instruction. The one prayer you prayed was that they might be one. Even as you and the Father are one. We pray today. Take away from us the little foxes that spoil the vine. The little disagreements that separate us from one another. The mindsets that have distanced us from each other. We stand here before you representing every, every altar upon which your name is mentioned. That beginning from this hour, you begin a spiritual surgery to remove the little foxes, the little misgivings, the mindsets that sets us apart from each other. Father, we ask you, for the error of the past, forgive us. But concerning the future that awaits us, open our eyes. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Give us light that transcends our denominational beliefs. That we might see the body as one. That when the body rises, we all rise. When one fails, we all fail. Father, may this word we resonate in the heart and the fabric of every altar in this land from this day 
in the name of Jesus. Such things that have plagued our lives. Hallelujah. And I speak prophetically that any man of God that comes into this city to divide the church, we speak that the spiritual gates of this city be closed over them and closed over the ideologies. Any man that comes into this city to destroy another man's work, provided they stand in the name of the Lord, then we decree and declare that they are far from this city. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now we're ready to pray for the sick. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, sirs. I'm like a woman who just gave birth. You know how a woman feels when she just gave birth? It's a burden of the spirit. What God has done tonight, it will, it will reorient our philosophies. And you will be surprised. Please, pastors, after the service, do well to hug one another, whether you know them or not. I love you. We fought last week. Now I've grown. I know better. I stopped my members from listening to you. He was just insecure. It is my background. It's not the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And develop mutual respect one for another. Honor is only worthwhile when it is mutual. You don't need to tell people you are greater than them. They are not blind. Everybody knows who is who. So you don't have to drum it on people's heads. If you have to convince people to respect you, it's a sign that something is wrong. It should be obvious. Are we ready to pray? Father, every challenge in my life is about to leave and it must leave now. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Please pray. We're about to pray for the sick now. Those outside pray. We're together. Here at House on the Rock. God is about to work wonders in our lives. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken.
that every stranger that followed you to this conference, it's time for them to go. I'm ready to pray for you now. I'm seeing chains. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains. And I want to pray right now. That one prayer and then I'll pray for the sick. will be done shortly. Please, whatever you have to do tonight, receive. This is a visitation on the land. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, it says there is liberty. Liberty, liberty, emancipation from all kinds and all sorts of the activities of darkness. For this purpose, he said, was the Son of Man made manifest that he may destroy, annihilate, liquidate the works of the evil one. Right now, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare to principalities and powers and forces, operations of darkness that roam around the heavenlies, tying the lives and the destinies of men down. I come as the voice of one sent, and I declare that at the count of three, let the fire from heaven bring deliverance right now. I will want you to shout that name Jesus that is above every name at the top of your voice. And I'd like you to bring all the people under the anointing here. They have to be delivered in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. I command every force, bring them out. I command every force, every yoke of darkness, inside, outside, please bring them out. In the name of Jesus, manipulations of hell, activities of witchcraft. Is Jesus no longer Lord over the plateau? Please bring them out. Enough is enough. I decree and declare that every force and every altar that fights the progress of people and families, it comes on that judgment right now. It comes on that judgment right now. It comes on that judgment right now. I command those forces, please bring them out. There's a reason why I ask you to bring them out. I want to pray for them. Whether you are an usher or not, just help them inside, outside. In the name of Jesus, I'm still speaking that anyone's destiny here that is under siege, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, be free now. Be free now. Let the gates and the doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every family here that don't seem to move forward, it looks like an invisible force tying your destiny, tying your progress. I come by a rod of a higher priesthood and I declare tonight, be free right now. Be free right now. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. Muhima ka sujada, Muhima ka sujada, We lift up holy hands, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship. He's taking all disappointments. He's taking all the stress. 
He's taking all your fears, he's taking all limitations. You are made than yours. I give you worship. this. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. After this conference, the testimonies that will arise on this city of Jobs will amaze you. I tell you this by the Spirit of God. You will hear families after families coming to pastor and say, what happened? My child came for a conference. We were sitting at home, but God was touching us at home. Listen, while you are standing here, stand in faith for your loved ones too. Some of you have sick people in the hospital. It's time to get those people out of that place. Now I declare by the Spirit of God that every force of darkness that has oppressed God's people, the legal access that you have, I command at the count of three, let God's people go. You know my voice as speak as one said. One, two, go, 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 go. Out of them now, out of their destinies, out of their lives. In the name of Jesus. Everything the devil has stolen, I command a restoration for these families. A restoration for these families. A restoration for these families. In the name of Jesus. And I speak prophetically that between now and the end of April, let everything stolen be restored to these families. The causes of delay the yokes of darkness. I arrest it that your academics will not move forward. You go to school and not be able to do anything reasonable. Who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not instructed it? Is it not written in your Bible that even the lawful captives shall be delivered? That I will contend with them that contend with you. Listen, I declare that any altar in Plato State holding the destiny of any man in all the local governments represented, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. I cause those altars now. I cause those altars now. there be miracles for you in the name of Jesus for all of us and for those that have come out here separated by the spirit himself you will return back into a an episode of breakthroughs in the name of Jesus Christ when you go back tell your loved ones you came to house on the rock and that Jesus is still alive on the plateau listen do you know what God is doing in Plateau tonight? God is using Plateau State to answer the devil that I am still alive for. Oh. In spite of what has happened, I am still the God of the Plateau. The sacrifice of the fathers will not be in vain. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Those who can return back, please return to your seat. I want to pray for the sick now. If there is any part of your body you are trusting the Lord for, please lay your hand right there, inside, outside, online, everywhere. Lay your hands, I want to pray now. If you have never seen a miracle in your life, prepare to watch one now, because Jesus is still alive. Please lay your hands quickly, let's conserve time. Mighty God. Mighty God. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Please stand for your loved ones. Stand for your loved ones. Stand for your loved ones. Some of them are in death beds. They are not here. Stand for your loved ones. There is a grace for this. 
I want to rebuke those devils right now. Now watch this. This is what will happen. I am going to pray and minister the healing power of Jesus. And very quickly, inside and outside, um, maybe one of the other pastors can be here to join Jamfa. As soon as I pray for you and the power of God, I'm going to pray. When I ask you to check yourself, you will see some of you are already healed. As you check yourself, you will find out there is a miracle. I want you to run over there. Uh, how do we do it? Okay, maybe here or somewhere here. We can just check them and we'll take a few testimonies and then I do the final impartation and we're there. Please, don't sit down asking, can God heal me? That's not the question. The spirit of faith, there is the gift of faith and the workings of miracles in this place. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? I want to pray for you. A lady is going to shout under the anointing to the hearing of everyone. The moment that happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. Right now. I don't know why it happens, but the Spirit of God does this. It's a sign and a wonder. A loud shout to the hearing of everybody. Now I'm ready to pray. Agree with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, Joss. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Every devil of infirmity represented here and represented in any family here I curse you now by the God of heaven I curse you now by the God of heaven the anointing the healing anointing is touching people be healed now be healed now be healed now inside be healed now outside be healed now be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ from the crown of your head my God my God I send such an anointing to the soles of your feet the Lord is healing pile pile in the name of Jesus pile is being healed now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing multiple lungs multiple breast lungs the Lord is healing it right now Someone with migraine headaches, severe pounding migraine is being healed right now. The Lord is healing hepatitis, hepatitis B. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God had fallen upon a group of people who had been waiting 40 days with Jesus and 10 days alone. And the Bible records that that event was so dramatic, people thought they were under the influence of new wine. Then the Bible says from verse 14, it says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, he lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. 15. It says, for these are not drunken as he supposed, seeing that it is but the third hour of the day. Verse 16, hallelujah. But this is that. This is that which was spoken by the prophet. Long before this day, there were prophets that spoke about this extraordinary manifestation that a time would come when they would experience the move of the spirit on earth and Peter stood up and said this that you see this is that our gathering tonight is based on what I believe is the fulfillment of three prophecies in the Bible number one Joel chapter 2 please from verse 28 
I'd like you to please be patient as we walk through a few prophecies. We are people of prophecy. Joel chapter 2 from verse 28. We're reading down to 32. Please help us media Joel, Joel chapter 2 from verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards, prophet Joel was saying, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. The Bible says, I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the, terrible, the great and the terrible day of the Lord. Verse 32 now. He says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, he shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now read that scripture. It says deliverance will come from two places. Number one, Mount Zion. And then number two, there is a remnant that the Lord shall call. Praise the name of the Lord. Second prophecy, Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house, it says, shall be exalted above other mountains and he says it shall be exalted above the hills and people or nations shall flow to it verse 2 that they will say come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob the God of Jacob is a God of encounters it was a name that came out of Genesis 32, the encounter that Jacob had at Luz, that will later be called Peniel. Hallelujah. And they will say, please keep that scripture. It says, He will teach us His ways, and we will walk in His paths. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Last scripture, Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. From verse 16, Acts chapter 26. This was Paul before King Agrippa, giving them the basis for his passion, his drive, and his apostolic work. He said, this was his encounter with the Lord Jesus. But rise and stand upon your feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. To make thee a minister and a witness. Both of these things which thou hast seen. And of those things in the which I shall appear unto you. We're reading to verse 18. 17 now. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Last verse, verse 18. The assignment is very clear. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me so we are people of prophecy we're not just this is not just an advocacy of men this is not just a mundane pursuit an ambitious pursuit of zealous people koinonia is an apostolic and the prophetic global family of sincere, passionate, transformed, and empowered believers with a mission to replicate the fullness of God's life on earth, to be agents that create the platform for encounters, for fellowship, for transformation, 
and even for revival. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, it says, The love of God and the fellowship. That's where the word koinonia comes from, the participation, the sharing together. It says, Let it abide with you, let it be with you all. Very quickly before we pray tonight, the first time I've been in this city for longer than most people would know because most of my travels have to be routed through this city and the first time that I had an impression to take the walk to this city was 2013 but whilst having my retreat and through a series of other encounters we knew that this was not the moment and the next time I would begin to have that prompting of the Spirit was three years ago. And the Spirit of the Lord began to lead me and began to open my eyes to that which He would be doing from this city, this nation, this continent. And it was on the strength of that move. And like Paul, I wouldn't be negligent to this heavenly call. And this is why we are gathered today. We have a very straightforward mandate. And the Lord asked me while I prayed and prepared, he says to announce this mandate. We're not here just for ministry. There is a very definite spiritual assignment for which he's brought us by his spirit. Six of them has revealed to me. Please follow me as we just express this and then we'll pray because this is what the Lord is going to be confirming all through our stay and time as we build and labor and this will also help you and give clarity so that we can release our faith appropriately to benefit from that which God is doing number one our first mandate in this city and in this season is to help actualize the global harvest of souls. The first reason why he has sent me here is to stand in partnership alongside with the men and women of God, the vessels of God in this city already doing great things for the kingdom to see to it that this global harvest that we have so spoken about that it becomes a reality. Acts chapter 2 please from verse 36. Media helpers will run through a few scriptures. It's important that we, we establish our convictions upon the integrity of the word of God. Therefore, this was Paul speaking now after the Holy Ghost came upon them. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. We're reading to verse 39. Next verse, please. Now, when they heard this, the Bible says they were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? These were a confused people in need of salvation. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be ye baptized, every one of you, no exception, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I like verse 39. Please read with me if you can see it projected. Ready? Read. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many. The promise of salvation and the ministry of the Spirit, the global harvest is a mission and a promise to everyone. There are about 7.2 or they're about getting to 8 billion people on the earth. And as far as we know, my statistics may not be accurate, but it's just a little over 2 billion people that we have as professing Christians. And we're not talking of vetting this by the standard of God's word. Are we together? That means we have well over 6 or so billion people 
who are yet to call upon the name of the Lord. And I assure you, until that happens, Christ will not return. The narrative we have is that Christ will return soon, and that is true. But he's not going to return carelessly. We are people of doctrine. The Bible states very clearly the conditions that must be met for his return. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. It does not have to be received, but there must be a witness that it was taken across the nations of the earth. Then and only then, the Bible says, the end will come. The church is a major determining factor as far as the return of Christ is concerned. So scripture says we can look forward to and we can even hasten the day of his coming. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16. We'll read from verse 27. This is the doctrinal basis for why we are here. Do you know why I'm taking my time to share this? Because unfortunately we live in a world where the moment people begin to see the supernatural manifestation of God's hand and the investment of God's spirit upon individuals usually most people do not understand the labor in the spirit that would have brought such dimension of grace and it is people will easily generalize it and just make it think that is some fetish or demonic thing we are defending the grace that has been given because we know what it will do praise the Lord graces are defended with doctrine the integrity of God's word Acts chapter 16 please verse 27 let's hurry up media please help us Acts 16 and 27 this was the second incident in scripture where men would have to ask what do we do the keeper this was this was paul in prison when the earthquake came there was a miracle and the keeper someone help me with my screen this the keeper of the prison are waking out of his sleep and the bible says seeing the prison doors opened he drew his sword and wanted to kill himself the bible says and then Peter beckoned on them and he said no 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 we are safe he cried out with a loud voice please someone can you help me walk on the screen I'm not seeing the scripture let me have to open the Bible myself okay thank you he cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm he says for we are all here next verse very instructive the Bible says he called for a light and when he had come let me narrate it very quickly he said what shall we do it was a question when he saw the spectacular hand of god the jailer came and said i am in need of this that you have received and peter took time to articulate the gospel and the bible says from that encounter that man and his entire family were saved Romans chapter 10 I think perhaps is the most accurate um, theological presentation of the need the need to get the gospel to the ends of the earth but the need to find men who are hungry and available Romans chapter 10 from verse 13 here's what he says it says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord that is the law you cannot be saved just by good intention you cannot be saved by an inheritance no that you came from a good family and then you inherit salvation no it says how then 14 shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed it's a question number two and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard verse 3 how shall they hear without a preacher so it starts with their believing but that the problem with the believing is their hearing the problem with their hearing is there is no one to speak in the first place and then the bible says that how shall they hear except there is a preacher then it says how shall they preach 
except they be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings, glad tidings of good things. Let me tell you, I truly believe in the name of Jesus Christ that there will be such a move of the Spirit that will bring a global harvest. A global harvest. It is important that men be saved. Look up please. Whether we believe it or not, I assure you that one day Jesus is coming and one day we are going to wrap up the activity upon this earth as much as we know. The pandemic has made us to believe that it is easy to bring creation at a standstill within a moment, even within a twinkling of an eye. But the question now is that we cannot sit and fold our hands and allow people go to hell every day while we keep doing church, we keep playing religion, we keep making a name for ourselves. I tell you in the name of Jesus, the days of celebrity Christianity is over. God is looking for a people who are passionate and serious and committed to see kingdom come more than their reputation. This is not some sarcastic statement. The spirit of grace himself will make it happen. So this is our first mandate, the global harvest of souls. Mandate number two, our second mandate in this city and even in this season is equipping and building believers onto stature and maturity through the revelation of God's word. Part of the principles or the assignment of a true apostolic ministry is to see that believers mature so we equip and build believers onto stature and maturity through the revelation of God's word Matthew chapter 28 please from verse 18 Matthew 28 and verse 18 Jesus gave us what we call theologically the great commission and here's what it says many of you have not taken out time to read what Jesus said he didn't just ask us to preach the gospel. I read from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me. The word there is exousia. Authority given to me in heaven and in earth. 19. It says, Go therefore on the strength of that ability and teach nations. Not just preach teach nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost verse 20 it says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo if it is true you are committed to doing that i give you a guarantee that my presence will go with you there is a guarantee my power and my presence will go with you whilst you focus on teaching, discipling, and mentoring nations. The only way to attain unto maturity in the body of Christ is the exegesis of doctrine, discipleship, the principle, not just, not just a denomination's approach to Christianity. That people are grounded in the truth. Our spiritual vacillations are an attestation a proof to the fact that we are not grounded challenges sweep believers left right and center and very little things make us to doubt our convictions paul said i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded are we blessed ephesians chapter 4 the bible says from verse 11 it was for this reason ephesians 4 verse 11 paul was mentoring the church in ephesus because of the overwhelming desire to mature the church, he gave on to some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. We read to verse 14. He says, for the maturing of the saints, that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. 13. He says, till we all come. That means this is a possibility. We can come to a state in the spirit called the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man 
unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Last verse. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the slight of men and cunning craftiness wherein they lie in wait to deceive. We have to mature the body. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. The Bible says they remained and they continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer. This is the formula that matures believers. The exegesis of truth, the communication of doctrine so that believers are grounded. You can pick at random, come. You can pick this gentleman from a secular approach now and say for instance this gentleman wants to be a medical doctor there is already a predefined curriculum he does not guess his way around it his assignment is to effectively pass through that system are we together now give him six years give him seven years give him eight years of diligently advancing through that system the end of that advancement is that he will become a doctor there has to be a methodical approach to our maturity. The reason why there, there is a random approach to Christianity is because the mentorship systems are not defined. They are largely opinionated. They are not based on doctrine. So you cannot guarantee a predictable spiritual outcome. A doctor in University of Joss or ABU for instance, and a doctor in Unilag or UI, if they come together, the variance should not be very wide because it should be a common doctrine that made them doctors, a, a common body of knowledge. So when a Christian from this region or this place or that place, when the variance becomes wide, we have to examine the curriculum that was used. And largely, the curriculum may be based on personalized dealings. This is where the tragedy of establishing believers come from. Personalized dealings are not a biblically approved strategy for discipleship. They can be a support system when doctrine is the foundation. Are we blessed? Two doctors who have never met, still by this example, can literally meet for the first time in a theater and not be afraid of one another. They trust their competence. Their competence is not based on their names. Their competence is based on who taught them and the standard that was used. We must raise our standard to a predictable spiritual level. It, God does not pride in remaining a mystery. Doctrines systematize our knowledge of God. Are we true? So we must equip believers to mature so that as much as possible, the foundations of the Christian faith, Hebrews chapter 6, tells us about six pillars that represent the foundation of the Christian faith. We may differ in certain approaches, personality differences, that's, that's all right. But the foundations that make up the Christian faith, there are pillars. And if we deviate on those pillars, we are no longer Christians. Are we together? This is our second mandate. To help support what God is doing within this city and to mature believers. You see, in this kingdom, the message is what gives value to the messenger. The messenger is not independently valuable. The value of the messenger is the quality of the message that he has received. He says, this is the message we have heard from the beginning. What really makes us powerful is not personality. No, it is the strength of the message and the dexterity of that message we communicate it with confidence because it did not come from us it only came through us are we together number three very quickly 
what is our third mandate our third mandate as given by God in this city and in this season is to be instruments of completion and balance this is the third mandate that we have to be instruments of perfection or completion and balance Colossians chapter 1 when you read from verse 28 and 29 please give it to us media to Colossians chapter 1 28 and 29 he said whom we preach warning every man and teaching man in all wisdom that we may present every man complete the word perfect there does not just mean mature it means complete in Christ Jesus verse 29 it says for this cause or whereunto I also labor striving striving to reveal dimensions that need to be captured in our experience Acts chapter 2 we'll read verse 20 then we'll go to 27 and 28 Acts chapter 2 from verse 20 did I get that right I beg your pardon Acts chapter 18 Acts chapter 18 from verse 22 to 28 the Bible talks about a very interesting man please look up very interesting story the Bible says that there was a man and when he had landed at Caesarea he went up and saluted the church and he went down to Antioch 23 the Bible says and after he had spent some time there he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and so on and so forth strengthening the disciples next verse 24 it says there was a certain Jew look up please he was called Apollos he was born at Alexandria notice look at this man's qualification dear servants of the Lord Jesus Christ when you have this kind of man you will almost ordain him immediately this is exactly what we're looking for the Bible called him an eloquent man number one number two he was mighty in scripture number three he came to Ephesus and then the Bible says this man was instructed so he submitted to mentorship he was not a rebel he was instructed in the way of the Lord then the Bible says he was being fervent in spirit and he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord but he knew only the baptism of John imagine that that man's book was the only book you had to read in your life you will be sound but only knowing the baptism of John listen no matter how accurate we are we only see in part and we communicate the part that we see now the challenge for a very long time is that I think maybe because of our personalities or through our, our limitation in growth and maturity we have mentored people into believing that every dimension out of our sphere is not necessary so we have different varieties of imbalance we have people who are mighty spiritual people but they are poor they are broke they hate influence and they remain in servitude then we have those who aspire to be great they become mighty men captains of industry but they do not believe in the reality of their spirit man their health we have people who ignore leadership and administration and then they are the lower levels of life we, we have those who love these dimensions but hate God there is need to communicate what the Bible calls the whole counsel of God every dimension of God was designed to help you believers into that stature I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant and do not sustain the requisite level of influence to make kingdom come happen are we together so we have many well-intentioned believers they love the Lord they are vibrant spiritually but there are other weightier matters the school fees of their children their life their responsibility as citizens of a territory because they have not been so mentored to appreciate these dimensions as also being spiritual we have people who love God they go to church but do not have the intelligence and the mentorship to raise visionary children and society is the effect of that kind of teaching 
there has to be a balanced communication of the whole counsel of God that it is still spiritual to be born again filled with the Holy Spirit prayer praying in the spirit sound in doctrine excellent in life you are an agent of transformation you are a visionary person they can go together you don't have to choose one at the expense of the other This happens when we help bring balance. Now, let me say something very quickly. It is easy to observe faults. It is easy to observe mistakes. It is easy to observe that a man of God is limited. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Not everybody is given that office. Just because you observe something wrong, does not give you the authorization to talk about it there are people designated the same way nobody can just arrest anybody in a society no there are people designated and mandated to see to it that this happens the challenge is that several people assume judgmental standpoints and everyone is quick to show that this man of God is not teaching this is not doing this right is a very wrong perspective the first requirement to be given the grace to correct the body is love not revelation the the zenith of transformation in the kingdom is not knowledge is love and until you can pass the love test not love for God love for men so that when you are communicating truth you communicate truth from the standpoint of love not the standpoint of hatred and sarcasm is god blessing us so our mandate is to help to support these falling dimensions in the body of christ to help bring balance to the body of christ that we come to a point of appreciation that no matter how powerful we are the best of us is only an effective member. Number four, what is our fourth mandate? Our fourth mandate in this city is to demonstrate the reality of the love and the power of God through miracles, signs and wonders. Bringing healings, deliverance, restoration, breakthroughs to men. I believe in miracles. Oh yes, I do. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in the supernatural. I believe that God is able to superimpose into the affairs of men and bring divine possibilities into this our world. Christianity started supernaturally. It is maintained supernaturally. If it ever culminates as far as our work on earth is concerned, it will be supernatural. To ignore the supernatural for whatever reason is a faulty understanding. We must embrace the supernatural. Acts chapter 2 and verse 22. The Bible tells us that Jesus as our high priest and pattern man. It says that Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you signs and wonders are a system of attestation that god brings upon a man and upon a people that they truly are sent from him please look up let me tell you sincerely people are going through real problems the challenges that plague people are real and whilst it is true that our primary purpose for seeking God is not things because we love him that's why we want to be like him however in the economy of God there is always a provision that whilst you seek him there are tokens there are consolations to your Christian experience there are proofs that show that it pays to serve Jesus in fact here's how the Bible puts it oh taste and see it didn't just say believe alone oh taste and see that the Lord is good Isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy from verse 1 to 3 
Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord, he said, is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. We're reading to verse 3. Verse 2 says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord all by the anointing and the day of vengeance of our God all by the anointing to comfort those who mourn not just by skills of empathy it takes the anointing to comfort those who mourn next verse verse 3 it says to appoint unto them that mourn still by the anointing to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified say amen in Matthew chapter 10 please give us verse 1 then we'll go to 7 and 8 Jesus having mentored the disciples Matthew chapter 10 from verse 1 the Bible says when he had called the 12 disciples he gave them power mm. he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease verse 7 when he sent us listen when jesus sent us he says as we go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand ladies and gentlemen we were not given just sermons alone it would be dangerous if all we were given was just a sermon verse 8 he says to prove what you just said heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received freely you must give listen in the name of jesus this is a supernatural generation we are men and women who must trust god to host superior dimensions of his power the kind of darkness that looms around the horizon will not the devil will not bow just to stories there needs to be a real display of the superiority of light over darkness I cried and I prayed and I made a covenant with God. I said, Lord, grant by your grace that no man has to see me twice to be impacted. Once is enough. Because I read in my Bible, there were hardly times when people had to meet Jesus twice. If you met him once, that was the end of it. And the Bible says, looking up to Jesus, it calls him the author, the model, the pattern do you know what it means for all of us here and all the overflows and those following online one dramatic manifestation of the hand of God genuine sign and wonder will preach a thousand messages in one let me tell you this I said this I think while I was preaching in Roger just a few days ago and I made a statement the times that we live in now may not even allow one-on-one -on -one evangelism easily again you can be talking to someone and they can arrest you and say why are you talking to this person maybe you are a terrorist and they can go and investigate you so we need something to happen on earth listen i feel sad for the pandemic and we continue to pray and join forces with government to see that this is exited from our region however the pandemic taught us that it's easy to get the world to listen a virus that did not have publicity a virus that did not have an usher a virus that did not have music people it didn't go through any workers training it came from a small city and forced the whole world to pay attention to it now listen in the midst of that pain read the writings on the wall god is showing us the ease with which the nations can come to their knees. the pride of kings all our intelligence combined the Lord is returning us back to days these things were not parables except we don't believe the Bible that one of these days the Sun will stand still again that one of these days hailstones will come from the heavens again that one of these days manna will come from heaven again listen 
this is not just some motivation that a preacher is bringing no I believe the Bible let God be true and all men liars that in one day 20 dead people come back to life and while you are settling on that testimony God is doing certain things in a city that there will be no other news except Jesus glorified Jesus exalted I am a student of revival I have studied a bit and I have had the privilege to meet some of the people who were mightily used by God let me tell you this if we believe our talking is going to be the only tool and the only instrument to bring the global harvest I want us to think again our fathers listen please there were times in the history of the church where people like Charles G. Finney would walk through cities just praying and suddenly things would begin to break out the world's revival the Azusa Street Revival with the one-eyed evangelist William Seymour there has to be a display of the power and the glory of God again if this does not happen I assure you someone will rise and shut the church one day there has to be the jealousy of God revealed among his people one more time that I am still God I believe in miracles I assure you you will not go back home the way you came tonight I believe in miracles I believe in healing I believe that demons can be casted out should be casted out always not once I believe that God can give men speed I believe that God restores I believe that time is a concept that is only a mystery in the world of men God who does not dwell whether in eternity no we say he dwells in eternity no eternity is still time it's just a summation of infinite dispensations the realm of God is now and from that realm he can manipulate any other thing to square up with the counsel of his will this is what I believe this is what this ministry stands for hear me people of God hear me great city of the FCT and our global family in the name of Jesus we are stepping into superior dimensions of grace one of the things that a dear prophet of God told me before he went to be with the Lord he said Smith Wiggles were told Lester Sumro he said do not die with this anointing when your days are coming to an end find young men transfer this grace to them mantles are falling here tonight anointings are falling here tonight graces are falling here tonight for the kings to arise, for revival to return, for the kings to be born, for revival to return. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, one of the things that happened was that light came from him into me and in a separate encounter he told me he said in every city and in every nation I send you that light that came from me to you there must be people within that region and that territory that that light must come upon I believe in miracles I believe in signs I believe in wonders I believe in the manifestation of the power of God as a revelation that you can look at a man and tell him be lifted whether politically whether in business listen let me tell you this listen 
let me say this there are veterans in business here veterans in politics can i tell you politicians here please find peace this is not the preacher that will manipulate people for gains we don't draw people we make them there is a grace It says, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Listen, while it is true that we continue to submit to his majesty in awe, we cannot deny what he has put upon us. It is true and it is for the nations. That you remain at the same level? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. It's impossible. You see, your life is limited by the kind and the dimension of grace that is upon you. It says, Thou anointest my head with oil, but I see what is on my head by looking at my cup. It does not anoint the cup. So I look at your cup to know what is on your head, for instance. You see, Every mountain is relative to the grace that confronts it. That in one day, all doors open. In one day, your destiny is shifted to it. Let me tell you this. There is nobody who lives what works. Human beings are intelligent. God built us with intelligence. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in supernatural manifestations. My brothers and my sisters, that while you are thinking about rent, God is already planning your house and He can come to you. And this is, listen, this is, this is not some motivation. It's His hand upon you. You've taken away the sorrows away you've given me peace undeniable there's no need to fear cause you're always with me you're my father my everything you've taken the pain and the sorrow away it's given me peace undeniable cry cause you're always with me you're my father never hear me that you can contact a grace a grace that can turn your life around these are not graces that are limited to territories no no it's the workings of the spirit Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my... Come on, herald the new season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. over your life that in the name of Jesus every door that stands close over your life here right here in the name of Jesus by the God of heaven whom we serve inside all of the overflows across outside on the streets following from everywhere in the name of Jesus that door opens now a father be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have to pray. Two more and then we'll pray. Number five. What is the fifth mandate? Our fifth mandate 
is to help strengthen the unity of the body of Christ. That's one of the things that I believe that God is going to be using us to do in this city. That in the kingdom, if one gets it right and the rest failed, we failed. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it says they were gathered together in one accord. Please say after me, in one accord. That was the condition for the Holy Ghost to come. Imagine that the Holy Ghost just came on one man and left the rest. No. There was a threshold level of unity. Listen. No matter how spectacular our individual manifestations are, we have not come to the slightest comprehension of the dimension of kingdom come that can happen in our territory when we become a coordinated force. Ephesians chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 to 7, just write it down for the sake of time. The Bible talks about unity. Unity. 1 Corinthians, when you read from verse 12, 1 Corinthians 12, from verse 12 to 27, Paul himself was speaking. Let's go there. Let's look at that scripture. 1 Corinthians 12, from verse 12. It says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. 20, verse 13. It says, For by one spirit ye are all baptized into one body, whether ye be Jews or Gentiles, whether ye be born or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. 14. It says, For the body is not one member, but many. Now, he says, If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it not therefore of the body? Next verse. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where will they be hearing? If the whole body were Joshua Selman, where would be the dimensions that came from our fathers in this land and everywhere? Listen, we must trust God to be matured and secured. Two words, matured and secured enough to appreciate and celebrate the diversity in the body without intimidation and with genuine honor. Are we together? The unity of faith. Let me use this opportunity to say this, that by the grace of God, our coming is not some childish advocacy to outshine and to show exclusivity. No, we are students of history and God has helped us by his spirit to attain onto a level of maturity where we come into a city first in honor to the graces and the vessels. Seated here are veterans of the gospel, some of the pastors and leaders here. These are people who have served God for many years with dimensions of grace. There are fathers in this land. This land is not barren of people that God is using. We are only coming as participants and contributors, privileged by grace. So that saying of Saul killed 1,000, David killed, no, 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 no. Let it never be heard from you. Are we together now? Yes. This is not an advocacy to downplay and demean the diligence of the men and the women of God in this city. It is true that we operate at different levels of graces. But let me tell you this. Every single man who calls upon the name of the Lord sincerely and is laboring in word and doctrine is deserving of honor anywhere in this city and anywhere in this nation. Do not be part of people who downplay the relevance. It is a difficult thing to bear the burden of the name of the Lord. There are people who have, who have sacrificed their health, their families. The average believer may never know what an average man of God goes through to sit with that the name of Jesus is lifted. Please hear me. We are a people of honor. I'm saying this because of some of the great things that have happened. Chances are that when you see crowds, all the overflows fill down outside the roadside. These are the kinds of, when you see this kind of scenery, 
the next thing is we paint this celebrity mindset joshua selman not so we are dead enough to allow the church rise beyond our reputation believe me if i had my way if i have a way of hiding so you don't see my face and just hear my voice i will be more than delighted to listen let me tell you this I'm, I'm being open like this so that you see that this thank god for the excellence but we're not acting here this is a sincere communication of the life and the power of god to see kingdom come until we love the body more than our individual achievements the man who is talking to you is not a failure I have seen things that most people may not see in their lifetime. I tell you with all due respect and humility, God has honored me beyond my wildest imagination. So this is not from a standpoint of weakness and sarcasm. But do not make the mistake of Esther. While she was enjoying the palace, she forgot that the reason why she was in the palace was for others. And Mordecai warned her, and said they may finish us here soon they will discover you're a Jew and don't you think you will be spared remember somebody left that position for you to come and Esther said ah let me come back to my senses and focus on the assignment rather than my office if I perish let the office perish but let the assignment continue is God helping us here I'm saying this because there are many younger ministers scattered around coming to draw inspiration and I pray that you don't draw a negative inspiration we need to trust God to tone down our arrogance as a generation we insult fathers we insult everybody just because some of them may not have seen the light to the degree we have seen it is no license revelation that does not produce humility is eating of the tree of good and evil hallelujah Anywhere you see a father of faith in this nation, honor them. Some of us may probably be in, we come from backgrounds that are very conservative. Now God lifts you and gives you a voice and you see everybody and ignore them. No, honor them sincerely. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Are we together? The unity of the body. There are few denominations have not preached it and sometimes doctrinally speaking i would have back-to-back -back ministrations and the doctrinal concepts of the denominations may vary so wide yet i have prayed and said lord grant me the grace to maintain my spiritual convictions and yet have the flexibility to navigate through the body and still be a blessing If the whole world listened to only me, I would destroy the world. You will think the world would be a better place listening to only me. That's the deception that has brought down great people. No. So hear me. In as much as Koinonia is the platform here, let me tell you, my heart is more than this ministry. My heart is kingdom. Kingdom. I love the kingdom more than Koinonia. I will give up koinonia a thousand times so that the kingdom will be advanced this is not acting this is true if it means me coming down from the pulpit and never preaching again if that is the condition for the kingdom to advance then this will be my last sermon i love god that much and i love his body that much this must be our passion someday if christ tarries no matter what we achieve and no matter what we do we're going to be lying down lifeless there used to be an old hymn that says fading away like the stars of the morning you still remember it it says thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling only to be remembered by what we have done press for excellence maximize the dimension of the spirit committed to you let us excel as far as our assignment is given but in doing so while you rise let there be a space in your heart for the body is the body rising why i rise lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred 
Let your love increase, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments, So we have an assignment that pastors can again hug themselves and say I was blessed by your message and not go and listen to it in secret and come out and act like I've not followed no 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 that we can celebrate one another and say that miracle I saw it what a mighty manifestation of the hand of God we must be secured and confident enough that someone can be organizing a crusade and a pastor who may not even be close to him can say I'm paying for 50 buses just tell the pastor a man of God who loves God and loves kingdom has done this I'm not looking for any repeat any applause on stage once it is kingdom come and it is sincere Men of God, we are men of God, but we are men. We must manage the men so that God will be glorified. The unity of the body of Christ is important. It says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you heal the sick. Not when you do all the things you do. Can I tell you this? Let me give you an assignment, my dear people of God. Now you are connected to this vision. Make up your mind that in the name of Jesus, you will be part of the agents, let's start from tonight, that promote peace. Honor men of God. If you have to talk, let it be honorable. If it's not honorable, pray rather than talking. It is such a blessing for a man of God to see a text message from someone who is not even his member say just to let you know you are doing a great work we are benefactors of your obedience please keep at it we are praying for you men of God are men they are just men who were helped by God to serve his purposes are we together yes this for me is one of the biggest assignments it is my desire to see the time when sincere people who are doing great things for God can stand and will let the nation know again that the church is not a nuisance to civilization. Our hearts and our desire is to see the nation's worship listen listen right now make up your mind that it does not have to be your pastor alone to honor that person if that person comes upon the name of the Lord some of you have neighbors some of you have churches close to where you live trust God for grace and one day surprise them you can buy a bag of rice and just take it to an unknown man of God what for I'm not used to this you tell him it's a new season God is doing something new in this. Don't be surprised if the man of God is suspicious and afraid. We have been wounded many times. So what church do you belong? It's not necessary. We call upon the name of the Lord and we have discerned that you love Jesus. This is our contribution to your efficiency. And we watch the wonder working power of Jesus in this city. No matter how anointed we are, divided we fall. Hallelujah. Number six. What is our sixth mandate in this city? Our sixth mandate is to help become a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and national transformation. 
this is the sixth mandate that we have come with to this city a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and national transformation and i'm so honored and blessed to have veterans our fathers in politics and government they are members of parliament people here from the presidency the senate so many honorable members just very few of them were honored i'm aware and i apologize we truly honor you and it's simply an attestation to the grace in acts chapter 17 and verse 6 they called a certain people these that turn the world upside down there is a level of visionary leadership and national transformation the church is not supposed to end its impact just within members we must move beyond the border of church and invent by the spirit of god a formula that is able to bless all and sundry regardless of religious affiliation regardless of political affiliation until we introduce a dimension of god that our sociology can relate to they have a right to think we're a nuisance in daniel chapter 2 when you read from verse 46 to 49 the bible tells us about daniel and his friends he says then king nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshiped daniel imagine that level of leadership and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders unto him 47 watch a very big lesson here the king answered unto daniel and said of a truth it is that your god is the god of gods and the lord of kings a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldest reveal this secret 48 it says then the king made daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler of the whole province of babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of babylon so christians can go this far next verse 49 then daniel requested of the king now this scripture every time i read it i am amazed look the level of honor that happened to a man in one moment yet he never talked about it he requested of the king he said if i stand alone i need support systems of like-minded believers therefore king let me use my influence now in leadership appoint for me shadrach meshach and abednego over the affairs of the province of babylon he says but daniel sat in the gate of the king what a leader we must trust god for grace to stand in partnership with veterans of government to restore visionary leadership we must change that narrative about africa that we are just a people who are out to get historically we've been a people deprived and when you come from a foundation of the of deprivation there is there is an economic and sociological rehabilitation that must happen to your mind otherwise when you access power you will view power from the lens of your pain this is what is happening it doesn't mean that the leaders are evil people are sincere but sincerity is not the only seed for transformation it takes strategic intelligence not just from a sociological standpoint we must import intelligence that is not affordable in the world of men for as long as we keep praying in tongues alone and just fasting and falling down in church alone and it ends there there are dimensions of spiritual reality we may not be able to capture but i look forward to times where people will love god so much in the parliaments they will come up with policies they would come up with ideas our country can work our regions can work our continent can work it only takes an allowance and let me tell you this this is the reason why God has granted us grace he said I set you above nations kings not only to uproot but to build to plant when you plant a thing is because you want it to grow so they that be planted in the house of God there should be growth they should flourish in the courts of our God hallelujah this is one of the reasons why we don't just preach alone we have been able to help well for the first phase the school of ministry and i trust that god will help us to partner 
with very visionary bodies to help rehabilitate people not just complain and say our young people are dying we have to come up with policies more than gifts policies a gift does not change transformation is what really really changes there are many of us here we have this vision but that impetus the drive the limit of our influence should not just be pulpit alone a true apostolic grace is not even a preaching grace a true apostolic grace is a governmental grace Titus 1 verse 1 comes from the word apostolos a sent one an envoy a communicator and a defender of a government the true assignment of the apostolic is territorial to coordinate the boundary of God's program per dispensation and we'll pray in intercession we'll pray as we help God will grant us grace to be able to build not just a people who are prayerful not just a people who are coming to church alone but people who can translate spiritual laws into wisdom keys and principles that the nation can be blessed by don't just sit down expecting what will Nigeria give me and we're angry insulting government now I'm not justifying we have our different kinds of leadership but believing sitting down and being entitled to just say people will come and change us and bless us is a dream that will never come to pass but we must trust God for visionary people who can rise that we should we will restore meritocracy back to our system that people who are deserving are truly honored in business in governance in career the education regardless of tribal affiliation and whatever kind of sentiment this is that if we fail in this then we have failed if we fail in this and we make a name we have still failed if we fail in this and buy houses we have failed if we fail in this and go around the nations we have failed but if you do not have any of these things I mentioned and you achieve this you won if Christ tarries let us do our best to give the generations that are coming what we probably did not have the privilege to receive rather than complaining and insulting the national anthem of this country says that the labor of our heroes past it says that it shall never be in vain very powerful oh god of creation direct our noble cause guide our leaders right help our youth the truth to know listen in love and honesty to grow and live in just and true the result great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice this is church this is why we are here if there was no cause we will not be here why am I saying this because being part of the vision you must connect with understanding not just sympathy and loyalty to a man because of what is trending I assure you the journey will not always be just smiling there are times you will have to engage it's a journey that will require courage it's a journey that will require strength people like new things people like what trends is human but we must sustain the stamina and the staying power to be focused to be visionary ladies and gentlemen this is our mandate in this city there are 3.2 million people there about demographically speaking in this city if we cannot influence 300,000 people with this ideology we have failed 
10% is the minimum standard of influence. Yes, sir. You cannot change a society if you do not influence that much people. This is not about church. This is not about membership. This is about transferring an ideology that is superior to a people to correct their understanding, correct their paradigm, and produce results that glorify Christ, bless society, and better the lives of people. So there will be a combination of spirituality, signs and wonders. There will be dimensions that will come from the economy. Because you see, the end time project, kingdom come project can never be, be fought just from the standpoint of the supernatural alone. There are people who will come from an economic standpoint. There are people who come from a governmental standpoint. There are people who come from a career standpoint. My charge to us, therefore, is that whilst I am honored, honored beyond measure for your support, your participation, and for coming to open up your heart and be part of this vision, I want you to know that more than a man, first look up to Jesus then focus on the vision then you may look at the man the man is only a privileged point man but the agenda is bigger than a man the assignment always is that we will decrease so that he will increase to decrease does not mean to be small to decrease means to give him space so that he will be seen are we together What then is your own role? Let me tell you what your role is in this vision. Number one, your first role connecting to this vision is prayer. Prayer. No matter how anointed God has helped us to be, we need prayer. Prayer for strength. Prayer for stamina. Prayer for longevity. Prayer for health. Number two, what is your role? Your participation and your connection to the vision. Genuine connection. Connection is a covenant. In the days that follow, we'll have the opportunity to teach on covenant. Covenant was a strategy that was designed to ensure consistency in man regardless of his emotional limitations covenant is an invention of the intelligence of god because men are emotional our faculties of perception according to god the highest faculty of perception should be discernment then reasoning based on laws then emotions if emotions have a toll on us the danger is that we will never have the same power to push visions to their fruition so we start so many things, businesses, ministries, churches, organizations, and we're excited, the euphoria of the new. But a covenant consciousness is what gives you the staying power even when emotions fail. Man is an emotional being. That's why anything that God intends to last, he does not trust it until there is a covenant that binds it. Whether it is marriage, whether it is service, anything that has to do with kingdom advance, relationships, if there is no covenant that binds it, you cannot secure God's attention because human beings are emotional. This ministry, the work of the ministry is by covenant, not feelings. You will wake up one day and it will look like someone sat on you, but the covenant will drive past your emotions and your pain. The king's business requires haste. So your participation in this ministry should be based on covenant. The revelation that there is an agenda bigger than the man. The agenda is bigger than the man. Your third role that you have to play is partnership. Partnership here does not necessarily just talk of money alone. 
God has brought a number of you people of influence. Partnership is any contribution that comes from your influence, from your access, that can help ease up the work, can help promote kingdom come, is partnership. When Nehemiah was about to build the wall, he obtained permission from the king and that granted him access the permission and the materials for the building and he made that building complete i believe in influence and i believe that some of you who are people of influence that god has brought here is for a reason and for a time like this everything finds its credence when it is connected to kingdom come there is nothing on its own that really blesses the blessing from it is the degree to which it is connected to kingdom come money access influence everything and finally what is your role in this vision to be an extension of the vision to others there are six local governments in this region the fct and 80 percent of the activities happen within the abuja municipal area every other region must be able to experience the hand of god the over 3.2 million people thereabout, it is important that they are reached and that we become extensions of this vision. There are people who need to be saved. There are people who need to be healed. There are people who need to be delivered. We must be agents, extensions of this vision. There are people who God needs to single them out and lift them. We must be able to bring them to the place of the anointing where they can encounter the grace that makes this happen. If this happens, then there is a partnership between us. But for now, we are going to pray. Three things and then we are done tonight. The first is, you are going to pray for me and you are going to pray for the vision. Second, I am going to pray for you and I will speak over your life. Third, is that we are going to leave this place with a strong conviction that as we gather week in, week out, already, you know, I was humbled and I said, my God, I thought we got one of the largest venues in this city. We did our best to make sure the overflows, there are three overflows down, a little space outside, and when I came, I said, what in the world is going on here? And one of you here sent me a text and said, Apostle, you know what that means? I said, well, I understand. I, I don't know. Who, who, I'm sure we'll look for where. I, I don't know how we're going to do it, but God is going to grant grace. Because um, when I saw the people outside, literally everywhere, it's like all the overflows down to the basement, all across everywhere people can just stand and look inside here across the road no man has the power on his own to do this it is god and it is because the feast is ready this is only day one so in the days that come you see the kind of thing that can happen it will happen it's a grace that makes it happen it's called anakazo. It's a compelling power of the spirit. It's not pride. It's the truth. It says all nations will flow to it. This is because of the lockdown. That several people from other nations could not make it. Africa, Europe, the US. And so they are following online. This is what happened under a very limited, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are const, we had to constrain and constrain and constrain. Don't just celebrate it for me. It is my prayer that every church in this city, that our meetings and there are people to be saved, there are people to be healed. There's no need for empty pews. That businesses will no longer be empty. That, that our schools will no longer be empty. We have about 3.2 or so million people here. There is still space for more. The king's business requires haste. Are we together now?
Praise the name of the Lord. Now, this is how we're going to do it. Let me pray for you first. And then you pray and speak over my life. I believe in your prayer. I respect the grace that everybody carries. I know that you call me a man of God, but it takes one who is with God to discern who a man of God is. And it is foolishness to trivialize the grace that you carry. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Because I know that even though this is an inaugural service, and I'm sorry we had to cut so many things in an attempt to still keep compliance, ideally it would have been that at least we'll give a few people room to just say one or two things. Please forgive, forgive all our limitations. But I assure you that if your feet step this ground this night, by the God of heaven, you will not return the same. Is it alright if I make an altar call? I believe in Jesus. And I know there are people here who are not saved. Please look at me. I'll make an altar call and then I'll pray. We'll just pray for the sick and we're done. Um, if you're outside, don't come in, please. All the overflows, when, when I make the altar call, you just move to your projector screen. Those by the roadside, just stand where you are and wave your hands. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? Now, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. I came and I saw the mighty move of God and this that is about to happen. I truly need Jesus. I want to start afresh or I'm rededicating my life. No matter where you are, if you are in this auditorium around the gallery, please, whilst we're clapping, I'd like you to leave that place very quickly and come and stand here. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Come to Jesus. We are here for you. Come and do We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Some will do what you do. This is the move. We need the move. Celebrate them as they come. Come and do what you do. All those who are coming overflow one two three the basement outside by the roadside those following those of you who are watching me by way of the internet from the US to UK Asia Africa it's time to make it right with Jesus Christ it's my joy and honor what a harvest the very first day what a harvest Listen to me. Many of you are making this decision for the first time. Some of you are rededicating your lives. It doesn't matter. No man condemns you. He gives you room to start afresh with him again. Please make sure you don't interrupt His Excellency protocol. Let there be people there, please, who are. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at me. My dear people, everybody, ah, there will be such an outpouring in this place right now. 
Don't think it will be this quiet. Let me just finish the altar call. Praise the name of the Lord. This is Koinonia. Those of you who are out here, please look at me. Hold on, please. You know, there are some of you, maybe just one minute, just to reorient our minds. There are some of us here who just come out for altar call, but we are not intending to be serious with God. God wants to help us, but we must be ready to be serious with God. Are we together? The grace is supplied, but we must take advantage of it. I thank you, all of you, for coming. This is, this is a mighty move of the Spirit. I'd like you to lift your right hand. All of the overflows, those following online, you're following from your house. You can just go on your knees or lift it up to Jesus. Please say this loud and clear from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Those outside, even if you are by the roadside, say it. You can still be saved. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight, Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I receive eternal life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that my sins are forgiven. I receive the life of God from today and forever. I go forward ever and backward never. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we present to you the ones Jesus died for. Thank you because you are the only one who is able to save unto the uttermost. I pray According to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that a new beginning starts for you. Amen. Receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Amen. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray that from today you are built, you are established in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pray for you, but there are two of you just standing here, the power of God is going to come on you. I'm seeing that evil spirit must go. This is koinonia. Huh? So uh, that's one there. I command that spirit to go now. In the name of Jesus, help them. If it is true that it's Jesus that you came to meet him, no, you shouldn't go back the same. So there will be the first fruit. Every spirit, those in front here, if there is any spirit that ties you down, right now I speak as one sent, that you leave their destinies now and forever. Now and forever. In the name of Jesus, out of their lives, out of their destinies. Halis kebranda kusiata, shila prosiziata baratia. I declare you are free, free forever. Now, very quickly, please look at me, all of you. You will be back shortly, but I want you to follow the counselor. He's lifting a placard there. Please just follow them very quickly. There will be a group of people who will just follow up on you, and then you will join the service. Let's appreciate them as they go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? I think you should pray for me first. Because if I pray for you, you will not be able to pray for me. Is that, is that, a, good, is that a good deal? I want to do something prophetic. If you will allow me. This is what I want to do. When you are done praying for me, I'm going to invite, respectfully speaking, Reverend Godwin Abba. He will just come and coordinate the prayer for me. Once you are done, I want to do something prophetic. Thank you. 
I will plead. I know this was not part of the plan, but I will plead with His Excellency. I will plead with him to come and release a grace for governors. Yeah. Hallelujah. I will also plead with Dr. Stanel, Stanley to just release a grace for entrepreneurship and business. Yeah. Hallelujah. I will plead with our father, Prof., as a professor, he will release grace for those who are in the academia. Is, is that all right? And then I will also plead with um, Reverend, Reverend Abba again, just by way of, of uh, being that he's, he's a direct son to the principal authorities, you know, within this land. At least you can stand representing him to speak over this territory and I pray for you. Do you believe in prophecy? Is that all right? So, Reverend Godwin, please come, sir. Just two, three minutes so that you will pray for me. When you pray for me, I will invite these great, great vessels of the nation and of the gospel to just speak that word and then I will just pray and we're done. Father, um, if we still sit there, please let's stand to our feet by the mercies of God. What a season, what a time, what an hour, what a moment. The Bible says, No man take this honor upon himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Anytime the calling is there, the equipment is there. Anytime the calling is there, the weapon of manifestation and the weapon for manifestation is there. Anytime the calling is there, there are legions of angels that are released to bear witness and command the manifestation of that which God has deposited in the life of the called. Man of God, we give God praise for a season like this. And we thank God for adding to us a vessel like you. We honor and love you, sir. The Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to stretch forth your hands towards God's servant here. And say, Father, back this calling with your armor. In a higher dimension. In a higher level. At a higher realm of operation. Back the calling with your armor. Any calling that lacks the honor faces reproach. Increase your honor upon the life of your servant. For no man take this honor upon himself. But he that is called of God, as was Aaron, let the honor that backs the calling be made manifest right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And lingri pado shetaliado. In Jesus mighty name I have you prayed and this sign shall follow them that believe one of the things that made the ministry of Jesus to stand that was the manifestation of the signs and wonders when Jesus was done teaching they said this one does not speak like other men they speak like one sent by God Lord we ask for the manifestation of the higher dimension of the miraculous the manifestation of a higher dimension of power upon the life of your son and your servant in the name of Jesus when he has spoken there were signs and wonders taking place in the house the Bible said the blind they saw the lame they walked out the dead were brought back to life we ask for the manifestation of power of signs of wonders of the miraculous in the name of Jesus let that grace be deposited 
every higher dimension let that oil be released in the greater level and linger below and play kiss a day and lick a rabbit and leap a like a and make a super lady he ramana a nazi and shall about a prank of those he laparada he laparada a higher dimension a higher dimension of power of signs of wonders practical instant immediate tangible manifestation of the miraculous let the grace rest on your son and on your servant Baligadus Jesus stepped into his city and the Bible says everywhere were filled even to the doors the crowd was so much that the friends that came with the leprous person they didn't have access to step in they have to pull off the roof of the room where they were gathered because of the choke nature of the place where the carcass are there is a gathering where grace is there is the commanding of attention father what we saw here today what you're saying right now may it not diminish the power for attraction the grace for attention the oil that magnets the congregation let it increase upon the life of your son and your servant in the name of jesus the light that magnets the power that pulls let it increase let it multiply upon the life of your servant lift up your voice as you begin to pray for the magnetic grace that power that pulls attention that power that commands attention generational attention transgenerational attention and live baraka days in la mano pain in la back in la kata sia la kata tat and le bring go go so in la mama na and live baraka dat and solo ba days ya dat in la baraka da saya and live baraka dat of Jesus Christ the hand for preservation the grace for protection let it increase and multiply upon your servant oh God Baba keep him from evil eyes and make him unreachable by evil hands in the name of Jesus begin to pray for him right now for the preservation power of God the protective grace of God the anointing to keep the anointing for longevity the anointing for sound health and strong health but the weight upon the Lord shall renew your strength they shall mount up with wings as eagle Lord we thank you for the strength of the eagle we thank you for the strength of the horse we thank you for the vitality and the courage of the lion let it rest upon your son and your servant of Jesus thank you father greater access to resources greater access to greater resources all round resources let it be made available to your son and your servant oh God lift up your voice as you begin to pray that prayer greater access to resources human resources financial resources material resources spiritual resources greater access and lick again and lick my and let bring go to so in la paragada day in la paragada shiada and lick paragada and let get the boy thank you for the name of Jesus Christ Elijah speaking to Elisha he said if you see me when I am being taken what you desire will rest upon you God's servant 
the apostle say you will speak on behalf of your father by the message of God in all humility one of the vessels that God has handed this territory over to by the message of God and apostle I appreciate the recognition of that grace I appreciate the recognition of that grace upon the life of my spiritual father Dr. Pastor Paul and nature to be precise praise the Lord praise the Lord and I also believe that it's a vessel and a man that you will get in touch with if you've not done that yet by the message of God we are privileged to have that servant of God as a blessing not just to the city but to the continent and beyond the continent by God's grace one of the voices in our time speaking to both demonic powers and the powers that be that one is a story of his own and his for another time that which you desire that he carries by mercy and the privilege of connection and not so from proxy by that which he would have loved to do if he were to be present with demand and command they drop it right now in the name of Jesus father with all sense of humility and by virtue of the privilege of connectivity to my spiritual father Dr. Pastor Paul and Nancy whom your servant there demands that that just flows in him be dropped here I pray for the backing and the witnessing of the heavens I pray for the backing and the witness oh Lord God of your grace that as your servant apostle Joshua desires that that which your servant Dr. Pastor Paul and Nancy carries father drops here let it be 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 in the name of jesus from this day we command the opening of the heavens we speak to the four corners of the earth we speak to the contents of the earth to yield to this grace answer to this calling and let the name and the name of the Lord alone be glorified forever in the name of God the Father in the name of God the Son and in the name of God the Holy Spirit in Jesus mighty name have we prayed let somebody shout that amen at the top of your voice God bless you real good in Jesus name Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please listen. We are in very prophetic moments right now. I want you to pay attention. It is, it is truly a rare privilege. Um, I'm so sorry that we couldn't. Uh, there are people, um, alumni and graduates of the uh, NIPS, the Nigerian Institute. I honor you. Sorry we may not have that time. Um, there are several people members of parliament, honorable members, senate. There are just a few, a handful that we're aware of. I'm aware that there are some of you who declined coming to the front. We honor you wherever you are. You have come from several places. Praise the Lord. Um, um, but it's truly an honor um, for me and then for all of us to have this father and this veteran one who has held the scepter in this nation to come and speak and prophesy listen there are some of you this is why God brought you here there is a grace for governance and it does not just happen so um, as the protocol leads him to just come and just speak a blessing we are trusting God that God will do the new here are we together the honor of being a one-time Senate president is an honor that you should not take for granted. Praise the Lord. We are using him as a point of contact to speak.
to the territory and to establish the fact that this territory, this region, this move will always remain a move of influence, not just spiritually speaking, but even to government. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome His Excellency. Is that the best you can do? David over Nigeria. Raise your David over Nigeria. Raise your David over the 36 states. Raise your David over the local government. Locate your David amongst your children. Let your grace locate them. Let your grace strengthen them. Father, visions come from you. No man can of his own do it. Identify your David and vision him to lead your people out of this situation. Take glory, Lord. Take honor. Be magnified, Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please, may I? Invite Dr. Stanley. Yes, sir. God bless you. Please honor him. He's coming to speak over business people and those who are in business of all sorts. And truly, he's a man that God has helped. And we honor you for what you represent. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you, Apostle, for thank this you. great privilege. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord. Apostle, my father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. Paul in nature says, a man cannot give what he does not have. He says it takes a man that has been there to take you there. And by the mercies of God, I stand here as one that has been blessed by God. And I decree the same anointing that brought me from the backside and positioned me on the front side. I decree that same anointing be replicated in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that same direction that I got 
that directed me to the right path of destiny. I decree that young men and women who are trusting God for direction, I ask, O oh Lord, that you receive direction in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare all those that have what to do, I decree the same hand that rested upon our business, that made us, brought us from the backside and brought us to the front side. That same hand is resting upon the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. I eliminate confusion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise, we give you the glory. We give you the honor, we give you the adoration. Be thou glorified, be thou magnified. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. I'd like us to please, very quickly, um, I just thought to do this. Um, I'm sure it may be a surprise for Honorable. Please, I may request you to come here. He's the first black man to be an honorable member in Poland. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, we, met, we met on a flight and honestly, he's truly a humble man. To go to another land, he will represent the grace for influence even in a strange land. And I want him to come and just speak that decree. Is that all right? Doctor, sir, God bless you. Let's honor him. Please pay attention to these graces as you receive them. God bless you. Holy are you, Lord God Almighty. What is the you for taking me as a missionary to Poland and raising me in that nation. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy over these ones that are here that you shall shoot them as arrows into the nations. <laughs> Father, you told us in years past that you are going to throw Nigerians shoot Nigerians into the nations. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare that this shall come to pass. In Jesus' name. Grace unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Very quickly, please, let me invite our father, Professor J.S. Murray. Let's honor him. Celebrate him as he comes. As he releases that anointing, please open up your heart, all of you connected to the academia, and receive by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. 
I say, praise the Lord. You know, there's knowledge that comes from the head. There's knowledge that comes from the heart. I wish I knew the one that comes from the heart earlier. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say, I wish I knew the one that comes from the heart either. Praise the Lord. He said, I have to say this so that we become mindful of what Apostle is releasing over us. Praise the Lord. You see, we are praying in an altar. You know, I see, you see, Apostle as a man who has sacrificed himself on the altar of God, consumed by Lord. And God is sending him as a light to drive out darkness from the universe. And it's planting what that belongs to heaven on earth. Praise the Lord. There is a knowledge I got to know late. You see, it comes from the heart. And when you are seated with people, you tell them what they bow to know. I hear me very well. You see, by this knowledge that the Lord revealed to me of recent. I release it over you in the name of Jesus. I decree that sign on cars, sign on aeroplane, will be replaced by the cross because the wisdom will come from the church. In the name of Jesus. I, look, the, the knowledge that comes from the head now ceases to operate in you. It will come from the heart. It will be directed by the Lord, Amen. the creator of the universe. Amen. I decree that every theory on earth will come from the church. Amen. I decree that every innovation on earth will come from the church. Amen. I decree that every Nobel Prize on earth will be received by the man in the church. Amen. Your eyes will not see the physical but your eye will come from heaven. You will rewrite things that men have written in the name of Jesus. Go and rule the world. Go and show sign that our God is the creator of heaven and earth in the name of Jesus. No more failure in the church. You see, when your grace comes, other grades will be separated by a hundred in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Again. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, it, it just occurred to me to do this. Um, sadly, we're not able to have her here. Um, but we had a moment, and I was very humbled. She prayed for me this morning, um, our mother, Mama Sarah Omako. Even though she's not here physically, she wasn't able to make it. Um, but my biological mother is here, but I have... Listen, 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 hold on. One of the blessings in my life is that I have so many mothers... My life is surrounded by and with intercessors. I don't know why they are largely women, mothers. For some of them is their covenant with God. They pray for me day and night. And one of these amazing mothers is in this place. And truly, she's a mother indeed. She's one of the women who... Um, she has watched the investment, the grace of God upon my life, and she has been a major pillar, a major support, and this for me is an opportunity to truly, truly honor her. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me call her to speak the blessing of a mother, our mother, Mommy Ojela Day, please. Let's celebrate her as she comes. Protocol help her, please. Is this the best you can do?
Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Lord, we just want to thank you. Most high God, we worship you. I have a lasting father. First of all, we thank you for this gift in apostle that you have given to us. We thank you, most high God, that you chose him for this assignment. We thank you that you helped him to give himself to the Lord. Lord, we pray that you will keep him for us. Amen. We pray, most high, that your anointing upon him will be multiplied. Amen. Father, we pray, just as so many graces has been released upon us tonight, Lord God Almighty, I pray, especially tonight on every woman, on every mother, on every lady, that the type of women that we read about in the Bible that did exploits for God, such graces will be released upon us all in the name of Jesus. Oh, we will stand to do great and mighty things for the Lord. The passion and the zeal of God will be made manifest upon our lives. Oh, we will seek no other person in our life, first of all, to live for God and to show forth his power in the name of Jesus. I decree tonight that the love of God will consume us, that the love of God will descend powerfully upon our lives. Oh, that the robe of righteousness will be seen in our lives. Wherever we go, Lord, people will see Christ in us. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that the vision you've given us tonight, we will be carriers to every area we go in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we will not disappoint you. We will not fail you. We will not falter. We pray for all our men, the young men in our midst. They will be all that God expects them to be. They will be representative of God in their homes, in their schools, in their places of work, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the almighty God will make us shine for his glory. In every family, in every area where we walk, everywhere we are found, the light of God will come and shine forth in the name of Jesus. Nigeria will be turned round for God in Jesus' name. Oh, our God is a turnaround God. We will go out from this place and turn this nation around in the name of Jesus. And the power of God will be made manifest. Father, we thank you. Ancient of days, we adore. We thank you for the privilege of being your children. It's such an honor. We worship you, Lord, and we say thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm a product of many anointings. And the speakings of men are very powerful because God hides his anointing, his grace in men. I'd like you to please be patient. We're almost done. But I, I just feel that it's important to at least just make this decree. This is our first night. This is the inaugural service. There should be proofs that you came. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to tell you with all due diligence, we have honored the fathers and the veterans in the land. <clears throat> We're not rebels. Praise the Lord. We have secured their prayer, their blessings, because we are sincere people, we are visionary people. One of the prayers that Bishop Abioye prayed for me is what I want to start with tonight to pray for you. He said the grace that makes ease, that makes things happen easily. Please, you don't have to kneel. And I know he prayed from the depth of his heart. In the name that is above all names. That name Ebenezer. Let it speak over your life. When mommy Sarah 
laid hands and prayed she made a statement and when we were at the office she said something to me she said there is a grace for ease that is on our ministry same thing in the name of jesus let me tell you hardship is not a good thing oh don't don't ever embrace it it, it can interrupt many useful things in your life i pray that this grace that came from the throne routed through the the patriarchs and the matriarchs in this city that makes for ease i stretch my hands may that grace rest upon you now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you the grace that brings encounters to a man please be sensitive and pray now you don't have to bring anyone under the anointing outside we don't have that time but in the name of jesus i am praying there is a grace that draws men and really helps them to see an unfolding of deep things in the spirit i release that grace upon you now I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic and I declare I speak to the two leaf gates of your destiny be open now 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 the Bible says and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he overtook the chariots of Israel I want to release a grace for speed just help those under the anointing father by the grace of God I declare I don't know how it has been before now but I declare speed take that grace now speed in your life speed in your destiny help them please speed in your family overflows outside speed speed in the name of jesus the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon i prophesy to the north the south the east and the west everywhere the helpers of your destiny are positioned i command them to appear now Please help them. I command them to appear now. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. The Bible says, Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows. I decree and declare, the grace that distinguishes, may that grace rest mightily upon you. hallelujah I was preaching in Rogic and I please permit me to honor the woman of God pastor mrs. bimbo Ekweme. God bless you we truly honor you thank you apostle Goodhart couldn't make it he traveled but listen while I was preaching there at the conference I was studying and the Spirit of God told me to pray for the grace upon the people the grace for visibility believe me people of god let me tell you being gifted is one thing but there is a grace that gives you visibility the bible says john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing there are many gifts listen some of you are in ministry you truly are gifted some of you are in business like dr stanley prophesied over you but it looks like the gate and the revelation came from acts chapter 12 that the bible says how that they bound peter and prayers were going on by the church and the bible says an angel came loose his chain brought him out of the first gate out of the second gate he says he came to an iron gate that opened up to the city there is a gate that opens a man to the city in the name of jesus 
I decree and declare the gate that must be open for your influence for your gift for your product to find expression receive that grace now hallelujah the bible says certain men came to david in the cave of adulam even though they met him hiding they bound themselves with a covenant to help him that he must become king let me tell you this no matter how great you are your exploits is predicated on the quality of the people that believe in you and stand by you no matter how anointed you are the gift of men is a grace that God can bring faithful men faithful men father where are the people who must show up over someone's destiny someone's ministry wherever they are by the spirit we call them into your life now <laughs> hallelujah listen it's one thing for people to believe you be conscious of what you are receiving but it's another thing for people to stand up and bless you the Bible says God restored the captivity of Job Job 42 verse 10 and he says his friends came and everybody came with a bag of money when Saul met Samuel he said on your way back you will find three men holding two loaves of bread they will salute you and give it to you there is a real grace for favor Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her Exodus 3 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians it shall come to pass that as you go you shall not go empty I decree and declare the kind of favor required to accelerate your life I declare may that favor rest upon you whatever has destroyed your prayer life that it has gone down the grace to pray the grace to fast completely gone right now fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar the grace to intercede the grace to pray the grace to wait upon the lord the grace to create changes in prayer receive that grace in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the Lord the Bible says and Jacob dug a well and the Philistines came and covered it he dug another well they covered it he dug the third one and they left him he called it Rehoboth he said God has given me my own space there is a grace for territory where the your portion in a land is kept and left for you in the name of Jesus wherever your portion is in this land I stand in partnership with the grace upon the fathers in this land and I declare that you locate that which is yours in the name of Jesus Christ now in the name of Jesus Christ we're wrapping up I want to pray for the grace that draws the ministry of the Holy Spirit to him. Listen, we are made by our fellowship with him. This one, there is a strong grace that will come on you. I want you to believe it. There is a grace, an embracing to wait, to stay until you are furnished, until you are made. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. From the front to the back, the left to the right, everyone who must carry this grace. Father, call people, call people into dimensions of intimacy. Call people. Receive that grace. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's a fire that is resting on you. Receive that grace. Seneteko shanakatazetias. 
Help them please receive that grace. The overflows outside receive that grace. You will never be the same. I release you with a hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me pray the last prayer point for tonight. There is the spirit of revelation. Access. It's a fellowship into the mystery. You are called. It's not just something you study. You are called into the fellowship of this mystery. And as much as the Lord has shown us mercy and helped us, I stretch my hands. There are people who must drink of that grace. I stretch my hands. Access to depths, revelations of the Spirit. Carry that grace now. Carry that grace in the name of Jesus. Carry that grace in the name of Jesus. Carry that grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyone here appointed to death, that death is following you, following your family members. I stand by the God of heaven. We declare it canceled now. Canceled now. Canceled now. Canceled now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. Just help those under the anointing. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands there right now. We have to pray. You are sick in your body. I apologize, we may not have a time for we this is this is something that is ongoing, so we have to respect time. But I just want to speak over. We cannot end the meeting without speaking over the sick. Help them, please help them. Every spirit, hear me, my goodness, I'm seeing chains. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Chains. In the name of Jesus, anyone who is bound by any demonic force, hear the word of the Lord. I stand as one sent and I decree and declare. My God, I'm seeing fire rest on people. I command those devils, be gone now. Be gone now. Every strange spirit that is not of the Christ, I release you from their influence now in the name of Jesus be healed now blood conditions be healed now bone conditions be healed now all kinds of abnormalities be healed now Eye conditions be healed now for your loved ones who probably have contracted the COVID and you're trusting God for their healings I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead healing for them now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus everything that did not work hitherto over your life and your destiny by the word of the Lord, I declare, return and watch it work now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, just keep standing. I, to request, you will find out that there is a form. There is a form that has been given. Pastor Pete, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Everyone should... Every one of you, you have this form. We're, we're all first timers, including me. Praise the Lord. So, please do us a favor. This is what I want you to do. Um, whilst we prepare to share the grace, the first half contains information about the ministry that is yours. Please take it for your own edification and then so that you can reach someone with it. The second half would please request that you fill it legibly. And then when you feel it legibly, do well. Um, just drop it on your seat. Drop it and leave it there. There will be people who will come and pick it up. There will be 
please for our special guests let me plead as much as possible i'll plead that you are not in a hurry there will be just a, a very light reception just something to honor you at the rotunda so please the protocol as soon as we're sharing the grace please just lead our special guests just to the rotunda and then you have some time if you are yet to get this form just wave your hands please PR help help our people so that they can get this please be aware that the meetings are Sundays by 5 so next Sunday we're still here by the grace of God and hold on please let me say this please um, I apologize because of the COVID situation number one we plead that you come on time and then number two please as much as possible please hold your face mask and so on and so forth so that we'll do our best to be as compliant I know it's not easy but we'll do our best we're not rebels to government we'll do our best to make sure that we continue to comply today was overwhelming and I can imagine how it will be next week so please do well to come early so that you can get a good seat next week I want to truly appreciate everyone, every special guest of honor, everyone who honored our coming, and for you all, our global family, we truly honor you, we appreciate you truly. This is the beginning of a great move. I want to appreciate my, my dear friends, there are people who have come. Pastor Joaquin, thank you. Pastor Fred, thank you. Jangfa is here, thank you. Manasseh, the Lord bless you. And then Captain Balami, the Lord bless you and honor you. Sorry we did not have the time. Um, for everyone who was not honored, please do not feel bad. I love you with all my heart. If we have to do that, it will take some time. But I must honor my friend, my brother, Pastor Pete Rock Sadiq. Thank you, I love you. Thank you sincerely. Thank you for your humility in the name of Jesus. So after the grace, please do well to greet one another. And please, the security, because of the security uh, and, and then the traffic, so there's no stampede, I plead with you, just walk with what the security, the Peace Corps, um, FRSC, we have different people just helping to manage the crowd. Please allow those by the road to go out first so that those inside, if you go out, there's going to be a stampede. We don't want a, any casualty beyond what has been. So please, just be patient. You don't have to rush out. Just allow those outside to move, and then you have the opportunity to move. Uh, same thing with those with the vehicle. Please do well. The, the, the road service corps are helping us to manage traffic, so please just be patient as they direct you. Can we share the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen the lord bless you see you sunday next week